Ahem. 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 Cough. Cough, cough, cough. Uh, what song did I want to listen to? What song did I want to listen to? What song? Oh, what song does yonder window break? Well, I'll just play the classic. Drink. I need a drink. I need a drink. One second. Right, right. Here we go now. Fat man scoop on the mic. Mix in the mix on the bill to steal. This is what I was fucking born to do. Let's go. Chevy cat. Hello, Chevster. Wait, let's see. Hello, Chevy. You gotta look at him. I don't want to do it. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it, huh, Chev? All right, you big old cat. Hang out. Do you name all your pets after brands? What's the brand for Maya? I have two pets. One of them's named Chevy. One of them's named Maya. You have not even found a pattern, and yet you've decided. Mm. Maya Higa is not a brand. <laughs> Maya Higa is a person. So even if it wasn't her Maya Higa, which is not, uh, that's not a brand. Maya is a bioweapons manufacturer. Maya Higa? <laughs> oh, that explains it. Alveus is a cover for a bioweapons facility. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. That's why they don't allow... They always, you can't just go visit it. You know what I'm saying? Shaq has a new theory about the moon. What? Wait, what is... I just got done sending a bunch of connections on LinkedIn hoping for a response. I hope you're not hoping for a response from me. <laughs> I hope you get your responses, but I hope you're not expecting a response from me. I will not be connecting with you on LinkedIn. That... Shaq thinks there's more than one moon? Wait, 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 wait. The problem is, for any other person, I would say you're joking. But with Shaq, you don't know. Shaq's got a theory on the moon? Wait, this is real? I'm for oh. mm -hmm. Are we gonna talk about multi-moon theory or <laughs> or are we just gonna let them silence us? Hmm? Are we just gonna let them silence? Are we just gonna let them move on? Literally fucking, he drops a fucking bombshell on us. There's multiple moons. We've been lied to our whole lives and we're just gonna, we're just gonna moon on, moon on. Um, I personally believe the moon teleports because it's never in the same place. That's an interesting theory. Backed up with logic and evidence. Therefore, it must be true because you wouldn't post about it on the internet if it wasn't fact. Um, flat earthers have a new conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. The, the world is flat, but the moon is round and there's multiple of them. <laughs> That's kind of hype. Well, the thing is, it's funny because the moon is obviously round. Like you can just see it. <laughs> so like you think if you're a flat earther, you'd be like, huh, that's weird. The moon's definitely a sphere because I can see it. But the world's got to be flat because I can't see that. And like that, 
No, it's a flat disc. <laughs> okay. 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 So what you're saying is the moon is like a vertical flat circle and the earth is a horizontal flat circle that we're walking on. Wait a minute. That actually checks out. <laughs> I've never seen the other side of the moon. Maybe that's what they were talking about when they made Pink Floyd's dark side of the moon. They were trying to reveal to us there is no. Interesting. And you all believe this? Every single one of you legitimately 100% believes that the moon is flat and the earth is flat. And <laughs> Wow. So this is okay. So I'm, I feel like I'm the odd man out. So I really what I should be doing is listening to you and adapting. Okay. Um, a flat earther at my school said the moon wasn't real. The government just put it there. <laughs> Dude, I love, I love conspiracies that rely on like <laughs> massive government projects. <laughs> Because, like, those are the most insane to me of all. It's just like the government can't build a fucking bridge lately. Uh, Trump couldn't fart in the White House without it getting leaked. <laughs> I get what you're saying. But I actually don't remember any high-profile leaks about Trump farting. <laughs> to be clear, I think I think it's a little, it's like one step above that. Before they, yeah, I'd say most things get leaked for sure. I don't think there was a guy going <laughs> <laughs> calling voice changer to the New York Times. <laughs> this goes all the way to the top. <laughs> the eagle has tooted. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think that's unlikely. I actually don't remember that. Speaking of Donald Trump, uh, I this is what I want to catch up on today. What is going on with Trump NFTs? <laughs> I've been busy today. I've been busy. We, we got the German thing. Uh, I have been knocking this out, and I am trying to catch up. Does Donald Trump have a new set of NFTs? The answer? Yes, he does. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Look at that, dude. Sheesh. I have bought so many Trump cards. <laughs> Ooh, calling them Trump cards would be way better. What did he call them? Trump cards is cool. Because Trump card is already a... Wait a minute. Uh, They're $99. Where's my... <laughs> Let's see. Who's got links, dude? I need to, I need to learn as much as I can about this. Quickly. This is the most important news in the world right now. Mm, Connor, Connor's pants. I didn't make a crypto wallet when prompted, and now my Trump NFT is owned by no one. I am currently on hold with the Trump trading card support hall. <laughs> are you trying to buy one? Congratulations, you're now processing your order. You're collecting history. You purchased one Trump digital trading card. <laughs> How do I make an NFT my profile pic? <laughs> oh, here's the original announcement. I did see this. Okay. Um, this is Trump on Truth Social. Major announcement. My official Donald Trump digital trading card collection is here. Wait. Uh... Hold up, hold up, hold up. How do you, can you, does Truth Social have a desktop? <laughs> like, how do I, like, if I want to see Donald Trump's post on Truth Social, <laughs> can you, 
Can you actually go there? Like if I, here's the thing. I just Googled Trump truth social and I don't, I don't get anything. I don't get like his, um, oh, there's the announcement video. It's actually not on desktop. I actually think it's, I think it literally isn't on desktop. Um, Trump doesn't use PCs based dude. Stay off the grid. Donald Trump just dropped an NFT collection. Yes, it's real. All right. Well, good. We got it from crypto T. The <laughs> crypto news, education, entertainment. I'm Alexa, a 20 year old NFT founder and Bitcoiner. If I can't get my news from crypto T, then where can I get it from? You know what I'm saying? This is the new New York times. Let's see what we got. All right. Hello everyone. This is Donald Trump. Hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, with an important announcement. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you guys. So I, did, I didn't vote for Donald Trump, and uh, not particularly a big fan of his policies, but I got, I got to give him credit, man. The man can shit post like nobody else, like nobody else in the world. Like, nobody else in the world, dude. He's the most entertaining president on Twitter that I've ever seen. Uh, opening your speech by saying, <laughs> unprompted, that you're better than Washington, better than Lincoln. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Uh, I gotta give him that. I give him that. It's funny. Better than Washington with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first official Donald J. Trump NFT collection <laughs> right here and right now. This is They're real? Trump digital trading cards. These cards feature this some This is of real. The really this is not a deep fake. This is real? It looks like a deep fake, but there's a there's literally multiple official articles about it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I gotta be sure I'm not getting fucking hoodwinked here. Washington Post has an article saying it's real. New York Times has an article saying it's real. USA Today has an article saying it's real. Wait, it's real. This is legitimately real and it's not a deep fake? What the fuck? NFT collection right here and right now. They're called Trump Digital Trading Cards. These cards feature some of the really <laughs> incredible artwork pertaining to my life and my career. It's been very exciting. You can collect your Trump digital cards just like a baseball card. Wait, what does this pertain to your life and your career? Wait, <laughs> when, when in your life and your career did you go to space, bro? That's not, what do you, what is, what is going on? That yeah, looks like Joe Biden, by the way. That's Joe Biden glasses. <laughs> he fucking stood on the ocean and held a bigger Statue of Liberty torch. <laughs> no. <laughs> Holy fuck. Here's one of the best parts. Each card comes with an automatic chance to win amazing prizes like dinner with me. I don't know if that's an amazing prize, but it's what we have. Or golf with you and a group of your friends at one of... <laughs> it's weird to be false humble about, you know, dinner with you not being amazing. But then a few sentences earlier say you're better than Washington and Lincoln. That just you know if you're gonna be if you're gonna throw in a little humility, do it when the <laughs> with the comparison to two of America's greatest presidents. Uh, <clears throat> one of my beautiful golf courses, and they are beautiful. I'm also doing Zoom calls, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, autographing memorabilia, and so much more. We're doing a lot. My official Trump digital <laughs> trading cards are $99, which doesn't sound like very much for what you're See, getting. Buy See, that's where I disagree. <laughs> that's, you know, you know what? End of the day, who wouldn't want to own this piece of history with Donald Trump? <laughs> Surrounded by falling gold bars with his name on them. 
That is a man of the people, for sure. I mean, literally, that that's a steal. Um, but I I just wow, it's ninety nine dollars for a Trump NFT. Buy one and you will join a very exclusive community. It's my community. And I think it's something you're going to like and you're going to like it a lot. They also make perfect gifts. So you can buy them with your credit card. Or... Look up the live reaction on Fox. Do you have a... <laughs> Do you have a link? I would, lo I would love to see the live reaction, bro. Crypto. All you need is an email address. Go to collecttrumpcards.com and buy your Trump digital trading cards right now before they are all gone and they will be gone. This is my first official Trump trading card NFT collection and you get a chance to meet me. Go to collecttrumpcards.com right now and remember. <laughs> this is so cringy. <laughs> you cannot do this. You cannot do this. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> okay. Uh remember Christmas is coming and this makes a great Christmas gift. You're right. No purchase necessary. Void where can we When you're right, you're right. Wow. <laughs> Why did it take so long? Good question. Hmm. If you buy 45 NFTs, you're going to do some of the. I can't do this anymore. He's one of the greatest presidents in history, but I got to tell you, whoever, what business partner, and anybody in the comms team, and anybody in Mar-a-Lago, and I love the folks down there, but we're at war. Mm -hmm. They ought to be fired today. <laughs> you came out with something that's so important, which I still don't think gets to the heart of it. And hey, you don't have three harder cores than Cortez, Bannon, and Seb Gorka. <laughs> so when they're, and we're getting blown up all day on the Seb. Walk me through it. Walk me through your assessment of this, sir. Mm. Never should have happened. I, I mean, look, it, it's fun. It's hyperbolic. But whoever wrote that, that pitch should be fired and should never be involved. You know what's funny is this makes me want to buy one. <laughs> oh, we got Spectrum? We got Spectrum? Mm. Hello, hello, hello? Spectrum, Spectrum, Spectrum. We back, we back, we back. God damn Spectrum. Spectrum bad is what I think. That's just me. Maybe I'm bold. Maybe I'm sort of a hero. Almost like a Trump NFT owner. But uh, I think Spectrum bad. So I'll say it. I'll be, the, I'll be the one to stand up to the to the fucking monarchy. Oh, in any bit... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's so funny that, uh, <laughs> and what else been, yeah, uh, Spectrum's just been fucking a lot of people, dude. Spectrum your only option? Yeah, it is, it is. All right, here's the website. Let's see. Holy shit. Official Trump website. This is the, okay, this is the intro. This is what we saw. Doing my, f these cards. This is full on real. This is crazy. This is crazy. Crazy smart, dude. <laughs> crazy business savvy. Yes, dude. And think of all the fucking money we can make by buying one. All right, let me see. Apparently, my understanding is, I saw this on Twitter. My understanding is not only do you not receive any physical card, it is only an NFT, but you don't get to pick the one you want either. It's a loot box. So all of the cards are Donald Trump in different poses. You spend $99. You get a random card. And it's gotcha Trump. <laughs> Money well spent if you ask me. Hey, amen, brother. Uh, let's see if I can buy a Trump NFT. <laughs> Because you never know. You know what I'm saying? Everything could moon as well. That's what I always say. On this stream, I'm always talking about how you should always buy every shit coin and shit NFT project because any one of them could moon. You can only lose 100% of your money. 
but you can always make 10 million percent. That's the reason you should always buy lottery tickets. You know what I'm saying? The math is in your favor. Uh, <laughs> please don't. He already made three million off this. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> that's is that true? Tell me they haven't sold three million dollars of NFTs. Tell me that is not true. Trump NFT sales. Uh, Trump's new NFT collection is already losing value in the secondary market. Uh. Dude, <laughs> I forgot. Okay, wait. This was the announcement. <laughs> America needs a superhero. I will be making a major announcement tomorrow. Thank you. Major announcement. My official Donald Trump digital trading card collection. <laughs> this is his first major announcement since announcing he's running for president. <clears throat> Holy moly. Uh, law it's bad. I love Trump, but law this is bad. That being said, I'll probably buy one. <laughs> bro, he's got he's got a system. I gotta give him credit for the system, bro. I really do. Uh, I gotta give him credit for the system. Because, frowny face, you know what? At the end of the day, for $99, it'd be foolish not to buy one. It'd be foolish not to buy one. I mean, this, the. Uh, when my kid is sending his kid to, man to fucking private school on a yacht in a mansion off of the fucking Trump NFT that I saved for him, we're going to be thinking differently about what we did here today. Um. Uh, enter the Trump sweepstakes via no purchase necessary. Let me tell you um, a little secret about no purchase necessary. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, if you ever run a sweepstakes or like on marketing, you have to legally allow someone to enter w without spending money by sending in a letter or whatever. It's legally required. However, based on my experience at Twitch, <laughs> you know, uh, you never, ever, 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 ever pick the people that entered <laughs> for free. <laughs> for some reason, they never seem to win. For what, whatever reason, they never seem to win. Hmm, I don't know why, but they never seem to win. Uh... uh <laughs> if you buy 45 tickets, you're guaranteed to take them with it on. So I, I don't quite know how to tell you that I don't want to spend fucking $4,500 to go have a ticket to dinner with Donald Trump. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to put that in. Um... You know, it, no, it's more like, it's like in Community when Donald Glover didn't want to meet um, the Reading Rainbow guy. You know what I'm saying? You never meet your heroes because they, then they'll never disappoint me. <laughs> LeVar Burton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, you can't disappoint an NFT. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like, all I want is a picture, dude. You can't disappoint a digital link to a JPEG that I spent $99 on. Uh, that That's what I want. Okay? Is Off-Brand helping out with the German special? You betcha. You betcha. Um, what, what, uh, Trump NFT. 
From the boys showrunner? What's this? Um. Yeah, didn't they actually make a Homelander one? Oh. Wait. Vought. International. <laughs> Dude, they were quick. We got quick there. <laughs> Huge announcement. Official Homelander digital collective cards have arrived. Celebrate our greatest hero's life and crime fighting career by owning an authentic and non fungible JPEG of him. Buy now for 77 7, 77 7 bought coin while you still can. Sheesh. It would be better if I could only buy this NFT of Trump with Trump coin. Because then that could also moon. You know what I'm saying? I don't just want the NFT to appreciate in value. I want the coin that I bought it with to go up in value. At the end of the day, I'm tired of using unpatriotic crypto like Ethereum when I could be using patriotic crypto like Trump coin. Um, so is that is that it to this? I mean, he dropped, is there a reason? Does he, <laughs> I guess money. <laughs> the reason's money. Uh, I'm just I'm just shot. Forty five thousand NFTs. So if he sells them all, that's four point five million, something like that. Um, I guess <laughs> that's if he does sell them all, that's crazy. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Trump and SBF should do a crypto collab. Yes, dude. Can I use my Okay, here's the deal. Let's say I'm an investor in FTX and I put all my money in and I got nothing out and I'm mad. And all they have to give me is worthless FTT token. What if Trump partners up and I can turn my FTT token into Trump NFTs? Then, no matter how many billions I lost, I'll feel like I've been made whole, okay? And that's the government solving the problem. So he looks presidential. It's kind of a win. Yeah, Trump doesn't get money, though. <laughs> that situation. Uh, wait, I want to see the full. I want to see all the cards. I want to pick my favorite. This is actually really important. I need to pick my favorite Trump NFT. And I need to do it right now. Uh... Okay, here they are. Trump NFT tier list. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, so the ones I saw were the rare ones. The ones in the okay, the ones that made the video were the rare ones because this one of him just this one with the hard hat doing the <laughs> Stay strong. Fellow blue collar workers. Uh, <laughs> I want this one. Oh, I want this one bad. It's under $99. I can already make a profit. Bro, Trump in the glasses, palming a 45 basketball. She, I don't have any ETH is the problem. But it feels... Okay, so a lot of these have fallen below 99 <laughs> the day it launched. That's interesting. But I'm sure let's go let's go high to low. Which one's what's the most valuable? Okay. <laughs> this one's listed for I believe what is this? So that's million, that's billion, that's trillion. What's after trillion? Quadrillion? This is twelve quadrillion dollars. What? Okay. So let's make a bid. <laughs> Obviously. Damn. This is mooned, dude. Can you imagine picking this up this morning and then selling, flipping it for a quick twelve quadrillion profit that night? That's easy money. And they say NFTs are a bad idea. I mean, look at this. Is this is huge? What about? I mean, this is. And what's cool is, once you sell this, you can literally... God! Spectrum! 
Bro. Bro, what? Why does he keep taking me down? Can we not today, Spectrum? Can we not? Anyway, what I was saying was you could sell this for $12 quadrillion, right? And you could buy every single good or service on planet Earth for all of time. And that would be kind of cool. But I think your life would feel kind of empty without this Trump NFT. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like you, 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 yes, you'd have uh, infinite Bugattis. You'd have uh, 4 million, you'd have every yacht in existence. But you wouldn't have this. Someone out there would have this. And so you'd kind of be, you'd kind of be walking around alone. Um, wow. So that's, okay, that's high. Let's see what's a more reasonable price if I'm trying to get in. So this one of Trump holding a foam finger that says Trump with a weird photo filtered face. Um, looks like he's got the beauty filter on and a 45 uh, dad cap. All right. This is pretty good. This is a, this is a more reasonable. Again, we're looking at million billion, 88 trillion. This is a more reasonable 88 trillion. And I think that that's what we can pool our money and get to. Um, this one, hard hat, this one, bro, Trump power pose in front of the white house. But like after you've taken acid, <laughs> wearing a cowboy hat, this is hype. And this is like totally reasonable. 22 million. This is, this is real. This is practically a steal. They are practically giving this away. It's the Capitol building. I'm so faded in this example that I don't even know the difference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In this, in the hypothetical situation of this, that I, I wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. Um, his fists are bigger than his head. Yeah, that's what I want in a president. Strong hands. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I hate that I live in fucking Los Angeles. Why am I in fucking Hollywood when I could live in Trump world? Uh, wait, Elon's live in a Twitter space right now? Let's see. What's Elon saying? I need Elon to weigh in on Trump NFTs. Uh... Hashtag Elon Musk is a giant turd is trending. <laughs> That's unrelated though. Let's, all right, let's join the space. On accounts of Elon Jet as, as harmful using, you know, we have to admit, acknowledge using the same exact link blocking technique that you have criticized as part of the Hunter Biden New York Post story in 2020. So what is different? Yeah. here it's and no there more acceptable for me it's, it's no more acceptable for me okay what's he saying for you than it is for me same thing so anyway uh, so it's unacceptable what you're doing no what you, you, you docs you get suspended end of story that's it elon i have to ask i mean i think what everyone's wondering is it, it's highly unusual for journalists at the washington post and the new york times to be have their twitter accounts suspended and it just so happens that it's, you know, the, the, the boss in charge, you know. Uh, so, you know, what's the deal there? <laughs> oh, I think I think Elon has uh, has left. <laughs> I guess that's I'm unfortunate because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, guess what the difference is. There. You know, <laughs> Man, not I, to... so many... I was raring yeah. to go, guys. <laughs> I know I was too. <laughs> I was going to yeah. order a cyber truck. I just want to say, sorry, I don't want to browbeat him. Um, no. And, you know, this this he is dipped. reporting, right? There he is value to dipped. reporting where people go. You know, most of what Elon Jet shared was him going to the factory in California or the factory in Texas. If you're an investor or, you know, when we did our story on Elon's Jet, we found right, a lot. Well, I don't need to hear the whole thing. Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. She asked a very 
reasonable question, and he dipped. <laughs> That's so fucking funny, actually. Wait, uh... Wait, hold, hold, hold. Hold on. It's, it's uh, Elon. Hello? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Those reporters were fucking awful, sir. <laughs> All right, man, I can't actually keep two things in my head at the same time. I'm trying to do a joke and call you. I'll talk to you after. All right. I was trying to only say things that responded to both of us, and then I couldn't do it. Um, here's the Newsmax live reaction to the Trump NFT. Anyway, if you guys want to know what, what happened with Elon, my understanding is that uh, uh, he's, like, going around uh, getting rid of uh, journalists all over Twitter. Uh, anyone who's talking about the story where he banned the guy, the kid who was sharing his location, the Elon jet thing where he was flying. Um, am I getting spectrumed again? Okay, good. Um, so that's the thing. Well, the, the weird thing though was like when he, um, <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! It's not a marketing Monday. It's not a marketing Monday. Wait, I'm trying to. This one's on. Um, so he said, any any account doxing real time location info of anyone who's like, no doxing, right? But then immediately after, <laughs> he says, anyone recognize this person or car? Gotcha. And shows the guy's face and name and license plate. <laughs> And it's like, this guy may have been a creep, but the, uh, the whole point is that you can't, like, it's the whole point of your rule is that you can't have the mob justice figure it out. Like, you just don't, like that. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, um. Same day? Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Did he get rid of the correction or sweet? I don't know. Um, which one? That's funny. He dipped. Um, wait, he deleted the poll? Wait, what poll? Is there a screenshot? He changed the poll on ban lengths because he didn't like the result. What is this? Unsuspend accounts who dox my exaggeration in real time. Oh. <laughs> okay. So he lost this poll. Everyone voted to unsuspend them. Sorry, too many options will redo poll. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the way the question's phrased is pretty uh, pretty unfair, too. What's this? Someone at Twitter, possibly Elon, or the direction of Elon, is banning every tech reporter that's covered Twitter banning. Uh, yeah, this is what they're talking about on the call. It's just weird because these guys are just journalists who definitely didn't dox Elon Musk, right? So I think they're just covering the story. And them getting banned is crazy. Uh, list of the accounts being banned. Let's see. Let's see. Did you know that crypto is now dead because Nate Shot finally changed his Twitter profile pic? I want you to know this is separate. But you guys have known that I have long said. It's been a running theme of this stream that the day crypto truly dies is when Nadeshot changes his profile picture. I want you to know that I posted about this in our off-brand group chat the minute it happened. Literally within 60 seconds of it happening, I posted about it instantly. Okay, you think I don't know? 
You think I'm not on this fucking story? This is the breaking story of the generation. Nate Shot's profile picture is no longer an NFT. That is the end, dude. He was the last holdout. Nate Shot was the last famous person holdout who kept his fucking NFT profile picture. Now the bottom's in. Now it's time to buy, dude. Now it's time to load up on Trump NFTs. Uh, now it's AI art. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's the next buzzword. Holy shit. It's the, oh my God, AI art, the new NFTs. Oh, that's funny. That he's, He is the perfect marker for whatever is <laughs> the Silicon Valley trend, dude. That's funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, friendship ended with NFTs. Now AI art is his best friend. Yeah, exactly. And that's not just him. That's like every investor right now. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, I don't know what it is. So I can't have a take on it. Well, it's Nightcore Cotton Eye Joe. My take on it is that it's an affront to music <laughs> and to God. Um, mm, hey, guys, I'm a little late. When is the h truck NFT collection dropping? Ooh, the thing is... I have invested all my ETH into Trump NFTs. So I can't launch my own just yet, but it'll it'll come. Um, check the new poll. Let's see. Elon Musk, new poll. What, what are we at? What are we at, Elon? All right. Obviously, I vote with my king, all right? Elon's never wrong, but apparently I'm not with the majority. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh, let's see if he does it. Let's see if he does it. Um, I did see that assassination coordinates was trending. Uh, <laughs> uh, which I think is what he called his real-time location. And I saw a pretty funny tweet. Uh, I think I liked it. Yeah, when I'm asking friends where to meet up from now on, I'm going to ask them for their assassination coordinates. <laughs> yeah, because this is a very, I mean, this is like public information. It's, you can find it with a Google search, whether or not Elon Jet's posting about it. It's not, it's where his jet landed. Uh, uh, yeah, he's strange, bro. He's, he's a strange one. Elon Malding on a call. Wait, there's a different call? It's back? Did Elon just get spectrumed? What you're doing? No, what you, 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 your docs? You get suspended? No, that's what we just watched. This is we were we were there live, dude. We just saw this live. <laughs> they ask him a question, he dips. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um. Uh, yeah, he's been having a <laughs> interesting time. Uh, oh, bro, 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 bro. We're talking about Elon. Why the fuck are we not talking about, um, excuse me? Hello? Did I fucking nail it or what? The Elon Whisperer. Bro, I said this on Monday. I said this on fucking Monday. I literally Elon whispered this. I'm scooping the New York Times, dude. Look, 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 look. He just closed on Wednesday. He sold another six Possibly to profit isn't better. Possibly, bro. You know what? I mean, New York Times, just watch Marketing Monday. It'll be faster. <laughs> this suggests he plans to buy back some towards billions of debt. Uh-huh. Yes, I know. I can tell you watch Marketing Monday. All right? It's no big deal. I mean, what, 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 
This whole thing, this is not Richard, this whole story is everything that was in what I said on Monday. Um, uh, yeah, dude, he's, he's literally, literally dumping to try and, uh, renegotiate the Twitter debt. It's so, it's, ah, oh, it's, it was so obvious the way he posted it. I was like, it doesn't make any sense. And I, it would be so easy to be like, dude, you're just a big idiot. But it's like, wait a minute, there's gotta be a larger reason here. Oh, that's so funny. If you rearrange the letters in Brandon Ewing, you get Elon Musk. You. <laughs> I don't even know how to attack that. But you're implying that Elon Musk, as his eighth job, in instead of running, well, no, instead of taking care of his 14 kids, pretends to be a marketing streamer that makes fun of himself. <laughs> what is that? That doesn't, uh, doesn't really track. Mm, that would be his best mover. It's the perfect cover. <laughs> Off-brand is Elon's real passion. Yeah, it's all tracks. It's all tracks. Jeronic, thank you for the five gifties. Grouchy Train, thank you for the 20 months. Um, mm, 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 mm. Some investors and analysts are concerned that the competitive challenges Tesla faces are coming at a time when Mr. Musk appears to be not only distracted, but also possibly selling Tesla shares to shore up his purchase of Twitter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Twitter nightmare continues as Musk uses Tesla as his own ATM machine to keep funding the red ink at Twitter. Yeah, bro, Twitter was such a dumb fucking idea. I swear to G. Um, and now he's doing the Elon Jet thing. Interesting. Hmm. The Twitter buy wouldn't have been so bad if he paid ten billion less for it. <laughs> to be clear, it still would have, because you know he's already the CEO of three companies, and it's a huge distraction, and very polarizing and hurts at other brands. It's a bad idea no matter what. Uh, but yes, any purchase at all wouldn't be so bad if you could subtract ten billion from it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's a pretty low bar. Any purchase at all, if you're like, yeah, if I could just get that for 10 billion less, that's, <laughs> then I would have had a nice deal. He still wouldn't have, by the way, because Twitter's probably worth around 12 billion and he bought it for like, what, 42? So no, you would have knock off like $30 billion to be uh, market value. But, um, but I mean, end of the day, listen, end of the day, if Tesla is still doing amazing, like if Tesla had not lost half its value, 40 billion is, you know, he's lost more than that on the val the declining value of Tesla. He's got like 200 million Tesla shares, right? Uh, if they drop in value by half, he loses, you know, <laughs> I, I don't even know the math, but many, 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 many more billions than he spent on Twitter. Um. <clears throat> Um, lose the glasses the glasses are gone the glasses are gone ladies and gentlemen uh there's a new summoning salt oh that's part of the ketchup there's a new summoning salt we won't watch it right now but we could watch it tonight for sure for sure the history of Lego Star Wars world records? That sounds awesome. It is a fucking feature length film though, I will tell you that. It's a feature length film, so maybe we'll end the night with it. We'll start watching it at, I don't know, 9.30, maybe half an hour. And we'll watch it. Um, that's a good way to end the night. You watch Andor? Yup!
Can I just can I speak to the chat for a second? I implore you, if you are at all interested in Star Wars at all, or even a good a good heist um, movie slash show, um, good characters, good uh, pacing, good emotion, good action, good drama. Andor is flames, dude. It's flames. Uh, it's by far the most adult thing, like made for adults, but not. I'm not talking about. It's not. It's not a porn parody <laughs> that Star Wars has ever made. Like by far. Like legitimately, like, it it actually is not like they're you know, um, it's just not stupid, man. It, it's so much better than, um. What was the last movie, the J.J. Abrams one? Um, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Bro, it makes Rise of Skywalker look like fucking, <laughs> I don't know, Sesame Street or some shit, dude. Uh, yeah, it's just so much better. It's just really, really good. Hey, Chevy, what are you meowing about? Meow. Chefster, Chefster, what a chef! Look at this little fish name tag. Yeah, it's actually Sesame Street's actually good, so I'm not. What is weird cad? Um, the viewership on Andor is awful. That's why I'm bringing it up. I wouldn't even bring it up. I wouldn't honestly mention it, but it's like, I'm so impressed with it and it makes me kind of sad that it's not doing very well. They have greenlit a season two though. So if you watch it now, you will still get a season two. Um, yeah, it's very good. I mean, literally it starts out with a shootout and a brothel. I think, I think that's how, I think I remember episode one and it's like Star Wars wouldn't do that. Disney Star Wars would never do that. And then they did it. So it was cool. It was cool. Um, it was hype. Do you think it's like a Star Wars fatigue thing? Maybe. Possibly. Well, honestly, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't start out very fast. So there's also a bit of like, um, I don't know. People have fucking TikTok, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you're watching it and you go fucking start browsing TikTok and then you don't finish. Fucking happens, but when it gets the thing is like it built like I'm just gonna tell you it builds up to a heist in like the first six episodes, and it takes like five episodes to build it up, and then the heist happens on episode six, and that episode is so tense and good and fucking awesome, and it's like it's worth it because of all the build up. Um, I keep getting this ad. It's so aggressively millennial. Let me see what you're talking about. What is this ad that's so aggressively millennial? When I was but a child eating Heinz on spaghetti, I hoped and wished that I could be grown up already. Well, adulting sucks. Adulting sucks. You have to eat healthy all the time. But fortunately, your ketchup can be no sugar at a time. <laughs> So much of life now gives me pause Like having favorite spatula. I keep plastic bags, who knows why And all my succulents seem to die Eating well takes so much willpower And everything's made out of cauliflower And I think as I search for a Tupperware lid This is not what I dreamed of when I was a kid <sighs> Adulting sucks It sucks. Turns out you can't just eat sweets all the time But fortunately your ketchup can be No sugar at it hides Folding fitted sheets and shoes like my dad All this meal prep is driving me mad But with my tasty ketchup Life's not so bad <laughs> Millennials stand up! I want to see you salute! <laughs> Thank God. Thank God for sugar-free Heinz. Thank God, dude. I was worried. 
I was worried I wouldn't be able to manage this crazy, fucked up world. This crazy thing we call life. So many demands, so many pressures. But the fact that they took sugar out of my ketchup <laughs> makes it all okay. Thank you, Heinz. You heroes. For doing the work for us, the millennials. The hardworking millennials. Zoomers, you wouldn't understand, okay? You understand the challenges of adulting. Um, can't wait to add sugar to it. <laughs> Buying sugar-free Heinz to add back the sugar. That is a good idea. I just, uh, <laughs> that was a very, very, very mm, cynical ad about the audience's intelligence. Um, did you hear about the Heinz boycott in Canada? No. Why would I hear about that? New Channel 5 vid, is it good? I mean, they're all good, but this one, Bang Bang. Channel five. What's it about? Hemingway days. What is that? He's an author. It's mid. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we have to watch um, Something Salt today. Is there anything else? What else? Um, look at Trump NFTs. Oh, we've been looking, dude. I might even I might even snag a purchase. <laughs> might enjoy this. What is this? <laughs> People are tagging me, and you rage quit a Twitter space, bro. I was there. I was in. I was in the Twitter space. I was perfect timing. Mm. Community? I don't know if we'll do community tonight. Only because I think the summoning salt will be really long. My homie made you an Enron jacket. What's this? What do we got? Will? We're racing to see who can visit the most American. Don't want to watch that. Uh, Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all right, I'll wear it. Fuck it. It's a Lehman Brothers, E-Toys, Bernie Madoff, Investment Securities, Pets.com, FTX, WorldCom, Wirecard, Mt. Gox. Yeah. Evergrande. Ooh. Yeah, sheesh. All right. Fuck. Yeah, 100%. Can you contact Pay the Musician? 100%. This actually goes hard as hell. I'll wear this on stream. Uh, Dimitri Montes. Montes nuts, dude. Um, I call it the frauds and failures racing jacket. <laughs> yeah, it's hype. Um, only the highest quality. Yeah, sick. All right, shoot it over. I'll, 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 uh, yeah, I'll definitely wear it. Um... Best Trump trading card. What's this one? <laughs> is this the, <laughs> it's a good one. For sure. I wouldn't mind having this on the mantelpiece. Metaphorically, obviously, because it's a... It is a digital JPEG. But it is to the moon. It does look like this is... Wait. What is the highest amount that has been sold? Recently sold. Okay, these all were sold. This, <laughs> damn, dude. <laughs> That's my president. <laughs> Doom guy kind of faded Trump palming a basketball with 45 on it. For $91. Owned by E. Kitten. 
Uh, check this TikTok out. It's a beer alley. All right, let me see. What do you do for a living? I'm an investment banker. Cool, and what advice would you give to your younger self? No, no, look, if the token was fungible, I wouldn't have put my kid's college fund. I just got off the phone with this uh, Sam Manbank fried kid. No, 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 trust me, dude, it's just like the flu, all right? Now let's go kiss some strangers at Burning Man. Mortgage-backed securities, all right? More money in these means more money in your pocket. All right, hey, great doing business with you guys. Okay. Hey, hey, I love you. Who was that? Enron. Look, if it's such a dot-com <laughs> bubble, then why did I just buy 12 websites that I'll sell dog food? I'm really into this band Limp Biscuit. You gotta check these guys out. They're, they're nice. <laughs> Take risks. Take risks. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Good call. What do you Good do call. for a living? I'm an investment banker. Cool. And what advice would you give? Good to call. Uh oh, this this oh, dude. <laughs> They actually did. They, they they did a fire one on on Sam. Bingham. All right, Sam, welcome. Wait, 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 wait. As you guys know, Sam Bingham Free was recently arrested by the Bahamas authorities. He has yet to be extradited to the United States, but they're working on it right now. Uh, he is in prison in the Bahamas, and uh, this is what I apparently imagine it's like. All right, Sam, welcome to your cell. There's your bed. We got some pillows right. here for. What are you doing? Shh, take a photo of me sleeping here. If you're quirky, you don't go to prison. But no, you are in prison. Get up. <laughs> what? Andrew, thanks for having me on Deal Book. Look, I messed up. But above all, I hope this, this does, does not lead to prison time. No, no, Sam, you already are in prison. That's why they're not transfer funds, they were rather misplaced. Now, going on to how. Oh, hi, can you close that? I have to testify in front of Congress in 30 minutes or else I go to prison. No, Sam, you were literally in prison. Like, actually, right now. What? Me? Yes! But whatever fool. From transferring customer funds and FTX to your hedge funds. Stop playing Minesweeper! Like oh, hi, are you here to do an interview? No! No, you are here because you are actively in prison right now. For prison of forgiveness? No, like jail prison. Hmm, let me talk to my lawyers. Yo, where'd he go? Have you seen him ghost to Bernie Madoff? No, oh, fam. <laughs> Guys, we lost him again. What are you doing in my office? No, this is prison. All right, Sam, welcome to your cell. There. <laughs> oh, he's having a good time, though. He's having a good time. Madoff ain't no snitch, for real. It's actually crazy, because I've been reading more about Sam Bigman Freed's arrest and Bernie Madoff's similar case. And it's just crazy how different they were, to be honest. Bernie Madoff, um, yeah, just openly admitted it to his family and sons then went to the police and <laughs> and they asked him if there was an innocent explanation for all this and he said no <laughs> and then he got arrested like he he sort of just just knew the gig was up and turned himself in and admitted it all and uh what's crazy is if you look at it it actually would have been extremely di well not extremely difficult but it would it would have been quite difficult to nail him down and arrest him it would it would have dragged out over a very long time if he had chosen not to admit it and uh, fought it because he had a very, very, very sophisticated um, financial crime. Like he, he had a very good way of hiding uh, the transfers of funds and the Ponzi scheme. And uh, on the opposite side, Sam McMahon Freed, it's extremely obvious and they found it immediately and there is no way <laughs> – he could hide it. Uh, in fact, I think the the John J. Ray, the guy that's doing the liquidation, he did Enron and this one. He said, um, this is nothing like Bernie Madoff in that that was a complicated financial crime with many layers. And this is a simple case of embezzlement. Like this is the, They just took the money. Like they, they literally just took customer money and then spent it. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no like routing it through shell companies. And you know what I'm saying? Like they just took it and spent it. Um, have you done a video on Bernie Madoff? I haven't. I think the next video I would do in that in that line would be about Enron. I, I kind of want to cover Enron eventually. Madoff didn't have crazy hair though. True. Fucking facts. Madoff was not the world's most generous billionaire. Um, remember when you said you're going to be more EST friendly? Think of the 26 months. I did I say that? I think I said. I was going to be more EST friendly as I was going to be nicer to EST people. And if you are an EST frog, 
I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope the sun is shining tomorrow, obviously, because it's like 1 a.m. for you. <laughs> and I hope everything goes well. I want to give you a big thank you for watching. So that's just me being more friendly to EST. Um, Antics, thank you for the 10 months. Sub for 10 months. My dad hasn't come back, but you're doing okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, cool. Purple Cliff, thank you for the 11. Sikawan, thank you for the 28 months. Very long time. Whooper, thank you for the eight months. Toaster, thank you for the four. Professor Mudkip. PK Raid, thank you for the 28 months. Can you say hi, Parker, for me? Hello, Parker. Is Parker your friend? Fuck you, Parker. Uh, funny article on Madoff. There, you can clip that, too. Uh, oh. Hope. Wait, what are you? Paper box house. Thank you for the gifties. <gasps> Speaking of gifties, did you guys know? Did you guys know? Are you guys informed enough, aware enough that I, <gasps> they changed it. No, I lied. I can't read. <laughs> they didn't change it. Uh, okay. Uh, I am currently plat four and need to get plat three to earn you all 100 gifted subs, which means I am like, but two mere games away, maybe even one game, uh, from earning everyone 100 gifted subs. Um, everyone who's saying 70% on stream can go fuck themselves. <laughs> That's my theory on that. Um, so I might uh, might knock out some games. Um, Boxbox says a trioc. A trioc, a trioc. Hey, as long as those gifted keep flowing, you know what I'm saying? You can call me fucking Sally. Um, if... Hit, let, me, let me just. Sorry, I gotta go. One second. Uh, who is this? Who is this? Hip Spinster. If you spam that same message, hey Brandon Ewing, or should I say Elon Musk, you should get AI to write a code that pays Twitter debt. If you spam that one more time, I'm going to ban you <laughs> because you have said it literally 400 times straight. I'm glossing over it because it's not particularly funny. <laughs> Please stop spamming the same message 400 times straight. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, hey, truck, you should get the balloon chipper. Oh, good. I'm in my personal hell. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that I died today. I was wondering. I was wondering why I was streaming again because I thought I was taking a break. I realized that I am now in hell, and I'm going to be hearing. Um, oh wait! Oh, speaking of Kali pasta, wait, 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 wait. Can I find this? Oh, I'm never gonna be able to find it. I'm never gonna be able to find this. Uh, hold up. Maybe I can find it. Where, where is it? Where is it? Where, um, did he delete it? Oh man. There's no food in my teeth, right? Is there? I don't think so. Dude, I'm trying to find... Oh, dude, where the fuck? Is this it? There was a copy pasta today with... Um, Fizzy from Slippy. Oh, here it is. I found it. 
<laughs> Where is it? <laughs> okay, before I show this, I need you guys to I need to be serious here. I need to be, I need to be honestly sincerely serious. Okay? <laughs> I need to be serious. You cannot go. Um, uh, legitimate. I think this is really funny and I want to show it to you because I saw it today and I want to share things with you and I want to be able to laugh at the same things together. Please, please, please do not go to this person's Twitter account or anyone's Twitter account or jump into this thread or say anything or just get involved. You know, just sit back, laugh and enjoy it. Don't be weird. Don't attack anybody. Don't do anything. Okay, if you do that, you are not a part of my community. 100% disavowing. I don't support it. I think it'd be weird. I think it'd be cringe. Don't do it. All right. Now that being said, that being said, okay, this guy. <laughs> Let me give you um, the backstory. All right. So if you guys don't play Melee, uh, Fizzy is a developer who created online matchmaking for Melee called Slippy. It's amazing. It's fucking awesome. Just recently released a ranked mode. Okay? Put a ranked mode. Okay? Uh, and everyone loves it. It's it's amazing. For free, basically, he worked and made this whole fucking awesome online net code. And now he's releasing a ranked mode that will soon be free for everybody, but now it's a test. All right? It's amazing. Okay? Then he posted, uh, just banned four players for circumventing our fair reporting protections. This includes the infamous Billy. I don't know who that is. I don't know who Billy is. Quitting the game will count as a loss. Okay to do. Shady stuff like this is a bannable, bannable offense. Top Falcon player asks, should we, be, should we be reporting these people or the system pick them up somehow? Our system flags them already. Right now, we only accept user reports for things like display name violations. Then this guy jumps in. <laughs> Lamau, hold up. You only allow reports for words you don't like, but not for cheating or for some shit? Ha, ha, ha. The state of this community, okay? <laughs> Fizzy, all right, calmly. We detect cheating automatically. We don't have the manpower to handle every sore loser that comes in complaining they got camped by Puff. Somewhat understandable, but you have the manpower to ban people for saying words you don't like? Lamal. <laughs> words I don't like is not the same as people being openly racist in their display name. And yes, we do. Because there's less openly bigoted people than there are sore losers. Yes, it is. The Smash community supports open racism, and you don't say a word about it. Young Waff held a blacks-only tournament. Did you say anything? You think words are racist, but you think actions that promote segregation and different treatment by race aren't? This community, man. Remember how often he says community, okay? Okay? Already weird. A weird message already. A little weird, right? You're a little weird. You And by the way, this is a tournament, small tournament held by Young Waff, a fucking legend of the community uh, back in February, okay? Yes. Uh... You really been sitting on this heated since February? Get a fucking life, Lamau. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. You mean when I interact with Smash people, I'm reminded of events in the Smash community, and I call it hypocrisy every time because no positive change has occurred? Damn, these morals and memory really dragging me down. <laughs> okay. All right, getting heated. Okay, continue. Why would you choose to interact with Smash people if you, one, don't play the game, and two, are reminded of events that have wounded you on a deep personal level? Then he goes... That's like saying, why not just let the South have slaves instead of just ignoring it? You call out wrongs when you see them. Extremely basic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Remember, we are in a thread about online ranked for Super Smash Bros. Melee. Just, just I think banning racist names is the, <laughs> is the idea here. Okay. Okay. Then Out Crazy jumps in and says what I think a lot of people are thinking. Okay. Shut the fuck up. Please shut the actual fuck up. Fizzy is doing everything in his power to carry the scene and not let it die. Then dumbasses like you come and complain despite us receiving minimal support as a whole. Do me a favor and stop playing Melee, you fucking loser. <laughs> okay? Great message. Because somebody said this, guys. But then... <laughs> now remember, you know, Fizzy's channel is only about Melee. And it's just small. This is a thread that has... You know, 39 retweets. It's not, this is not, it's not trending. Okay. Then he says, I don't play melee. Never have. I'm here to call out hypocrisy. Always have. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck are you doing here? 
What the fuck are you doing here? How did you end up here? What is, you've never played Melee? What, what is the purpose? How did you even find this thread? What are you doing? Why are you in a 14 fucking tweet debate about whether or not they can ban racist names in an online man? Ah! And then he said this community like a hundred times. This community, this community never played it. Okay. All right. Strange. I don't have a life or any accomplishments, so to speak of. This is doing a quote, mocking voice. So I actively seek out bad faith arguments to give myself a sense of superiority. This guy kind of calls him out. But then the greatest message that I've seen on Twitter. <laughs> the greatest message that I've ever seen on Twitter. The new copy pasta of the day shows up. 153 IQ. Full ride scholarship for my physics degree. State martial arts champion. Multiple world records in video games. Previous marathon runner. I'm in shambles, bro. My life is so unfulfilled. Wow, you really thought you got me when you know nothing of me. <laughs> Holy Giga Chad! Holy shit, dude! <laughs> Damn! Fucking roasted, toasted, boomed him. 153 IQ, baby! Wow, you really thought you got me, dude. When you know nothing of me. <laughs> dude, I've already saved it. And I've already used it in Discord chats. <laughs> Somebody in my Discord was saying... Uh, someone was messaging me that I didn't reply or something. And I hit him with that, dude. Oh, that's fucking... It's the ultimate counter, dude. It's the ultimate counter to anything. It's the brand new greatest copy pasta I've ever seen. Whew. Anyway, uh, like I said, I, I'm being serious. Please, please, please leave this guy alone. Just don't. Just don't do it. We can all enjoy it here. It's fun. Enjoy it here. Please. I'm, I'm being serious. Don't be weird. Okay? Just 100%. We can enjoy it here. It's very funny. Leave him alone. All right? Uh, he's a martial arts champion. You bet I'll leave him alone. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I ain't trying to get fucking... I ain't trying to get fucking karate chopped. Mm. Whew. That's great. That is great. That is great. Um, 26.2 miles of pure alpha. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. He's like the hunter confirmed kills guy. Yeah, I know. But it's just so funny that he's like fighting. <laughs> he, he has to... <laughs> He has to tell his whole fucking reputation in this fucking 19-page comment to a game that he says he doesn't even play. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. Um, uh, are you going to box Slime next time there's an event? I might. I might actually box Slime. He wants to do it. I want to do it. It remains to be seen. Everything's got to line up, time, date, schedule, but I would be so down. I think it would be such a funny match, and we would make really funny content leading up to it. Um, so I would be down to do it. Um, H-Rock pulls out a half sleeve of Spree. <laughs> Fucking old heads, dude. Old heads know the Spree story. Don't don't dare give me spree, dude. Don't you dare give me a spree in the fight. Mm -hmm. Your dad wouldn't know who to cheer for. Okay, <laughs> my dad would know who to cheer for. <laughs> it's not obviously he would not. It wouldn't be tough, dude. It wouldn't be tough choice. No, not slime. Obviously, obviously not slime. You guys are. I think you're. Is MK Leo winning Lud Smash event? Well, my tattoo says so that I got months in advance because I was so confident that MK Leo would win. 
so I'm pretty hopeful that he will bring it home. And my tattoos are never wrong so far. So um, thoughts on Riot giving VC weekends last? Yeah, if you guys don't follow, uh, I assume most of you do or some of you, are, I don't know, esportsy people. Um, Riot is giving all their weekend slots to uh, Valorant and moving League of Legends to like noon on Wednesdays. <laughs> you know, it's noon on weekdays, basically. So League of Legends is pretty much, I mean, if it, it was already dead, but now it's, for North America, it's just dead, dude. Ain't nobody watching fucking League of Legends in the middle of school or, you know what I'm saying? It's lit literally, they're just saying, okay, Valorant's got this. Um... So yeah, that's, but is Valor more popular in North America? By a fucking heaps, heaps and bounds. Valor's crushing NA. League is not doing that well in A. Um, you think law players go to school or work Omega law? <laughs> I actually think they do. I actually think the most common law player is a person... <laughs> who is uh, putting off responsibilities for school or work at that exact moment. <laughs> I think every single person that you play with in ranked is someone who has something better they should be doing, is ignoring it, and is in a bad mood because of it. <laughs> that's, that's legitimately, I think, every League of Legends ranked player. SBF, yeah, he had something he could be doing. Uh, building a real business, but instead... Um, Riot said we must do our part in taking down SBF and therefore league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riot is <laughs> Riot is moving the LCS to the one hour a day that uh, SBF gets uh, to go to the library in the prison, <laughs> so he can watch too. They're actually trying to help him out. That's nice of them, dude. They want to make sure SBF gets a chance to fucking tune in. So we can get out of bronze. Um, Connell Jonald, thank you for the 38 viewers. Uh, and the raid in general. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, Connell Jonald Frogs. Um, Marcus, thank you for the 10 months. Bottom Frag Sneer, thank you for the 7 months. Battle King, thank you for the, the 12 uh, it's nice watching a billionaire go to prison. It is funny that, um, listen, I, I agree. I have a justice boner about SBF. I'll honestly say it. I'm, I'm actually just very pleased in general that he's actually going to go to jail. It seems, I mean, he's in jail right now. That I think it's, it's pretty, seems pretty open shut that he's actually going to, you know, they're going to like see he did something wrong, prove he did something wrong, and then send him to jail for it, which is like, it seems hard to do for rich people. What I am a little uh, amused by is that it happened so quickly the second he wasn't a billionaire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, in all honesty, this is a pretty blatant and obvious fraud. But when he was a billionaire, this is the, whole, the party train kept going. And the second he wasn't a billionaire, now it's like, boom, boom, justice, justice, justice. Not like fucking run him down. Um. Uh, just seems easier to get him. Uh, nothing changed the perception. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, and and he does have a lot of money. I I think people were acting like he his his lies about being broke are true. He already said he put up like fucking, I don't know, a few million for bail if they offered it and they denied it. He he's got, it's, it's yeah. Wait wait, didn't he say wait 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 wait. Uh, I mean, he, he had a direct quote where he said he only had $100,000 to his name. <laughs> and then recently said he would pay 250 k just for cash bail. Right, right here. So, <laughs> which he was denied. And he was begging the judge to be let loose so he could eat his vegan diet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm very excited to see this dude go to jail, bro. Huge flight lit. 
a massive flight risk. The second this guy gets out, he is fleeing to, you know, Hong Kong or Dubai. 100%. They cannot let him out. The prison only serves shrimp. <laughs> Uh, Your Honor, I think there's been a misunderstanding. I'm vegan. Why didn't he flee before? I think legitimately he didn't think you would be arrested. Um, yeah, it seems like they were so quiet about it and then hit him all at once. And he, he didn't think also that the Bahamas would be willing to cooperate in the way they have been. Um, Did you see his mom laughing at him being called a fugitive? No, do you have a link? His mom laughed at that because he is. I mean, he was. SBF to the judge. I have 153 IQ, a full ride scholarship to my physics degree. <laughs> State martial arts champion. Yeah, that'd be sick. If SBF said that, it'd be kind of cool, actually. You'd turn, turn my opinion. I definitely want to see more about um, his parents. Uh, I think that's one of the big links to the story is how involved his parents were, how they profited significantly. Like they got millions of dollars in property and they have such deep knowledge of, you know, uh, how to get away with something like this. And we're helping him out. I think it, it, there definitely needs to, they might even need to be charged. Um. What is this? Sam Bankman frees were at his hearing in the Bahamas and his mother laughed during the proceedings. Well, that's kind of based if she laughed at him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If his mother was fucking chortling, uh, I'm laughing. Hmm. His father, Joseph Bankman, occasionally put his fingers in his ears as if to drown out the sound of the proceedings. <laughs> that's that's what a top-level compliance lawyer would tell you. If you can't hear the judge's sentence, you can't. You, it doesn't legally apply. As long as you go la 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 la, then the charges can't stick. All right, summoning salt. I think it's time. <laughs> the too dumb to commit fraud thing kind of worked for Mount Gox's CEO. A different situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is a different instance, and I think there's just so much evidence that they were well aware. Uh, in this case, that I don't, I don't think it's gonna work. I think that's what he's been trying to do. Is that I'm the, I'm just such a goof. Oh, I mislabeled everything. Oh man. Oh, how did this end up here? Jeez. I think he's going to try it. I don't think it's going to stick. I think there's I think there's pretty compelling evidence. And I think that it's pretty obvious that Caroline Ellison has flipped. So I think all that combined is going to make it pretty clear. They knew they were doing stuff that was illegal and they were doing it anyway. Hey, little gopher boy, Atriog. You're looking real nice today. Hello, Ted. <laughs> nice to see you too. <laughs> That's not how I would greet somebody that I haven't know that well. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't call them hey, little gopher boy and compliment their appearance in a kind of a creepy way. But, you know, we all have our own unique ways of entering conversations. Uh, don't say nice one, Ted. Guys, you're on my side. Guys, this is my chat. <laughs> Ted Nivison can't come in here and call me G gopher boy. And then you guys all jump on it. And now you're <laughs> classic Ted. Don't say you, know, you guys are all complimenting him like he's a fucking hilarious no, but this is you. It's like it's because of the tough guys around me. Because Ted Nivison's a lot taller than me, and he's like really strong. I saw him fight slime. Actually, I have an unreleased video on my phone of Ted Nivison just absolutely beating the shit out of slime. <laughs> That's actually a real. I really do have this video. Uh, I think they were arguing about something in Philly. Why you guys are just so nice. Okay. <laughs> yes, guys. You've hit him with our fake welcoming strategy. Okay. 
Good on you. I'm glad you guys, good job. Operation, pretend to be nice to Ted Nivison so he thinks he's cool. And then, <laughs> then we knock him down a peg later on. You got it. Um, but now, now it's time to no longer, now it's time for phase two. Hey, Shrek, what is your take on this? This is a clip of me and you asking me what my take is on this. I'm not going to. Um, Itrak doesn't know how to read. Mm, never needed to learn, really. Um, okay, we're going to watch Summoning Salt. As much as I do love the comedic stylings of Ted Nivison in this chat, I mean, he's really dropping banger after banger, okay? Uh, and uh, <laughs> I uh, need to jump to... to Something salt. So let me find it and also get a snack. Um, have a good stream, man. <laughs> Later, Ted. <laughs> uh, Brandon, go for boy. You can't miss. Listen to Carly Rae Jepsen's newest album. I would love to do that, but unfortunately, I have the list of everything else in the world that I'd rather be doing just slightly one step above it. But once I get through all that, I will do the album a hundred percent guaranteed. I just have to get down the list, but I will do it. Um, he called you gopher boy because you played Monty mole and point girl party. No, I, I understand. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> I'm 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 caught up. Uh, where is dude? Where is it? Oh, dude, I just have to make a new tab. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please. I'm changing my title. New summoning salt. Bada bing, bada bing, bada bing. And I will watch this. But first, we have to get snacks. Everyone, please get some snacks. What are we summoning? Salt. Oh, iconic. All right, uh, everyone go grab snacks. And we'll be back in 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and we'll watch it. And maybe I'll even dim the lights, you know? We'll just do a fucking nice vibe. Something so I'll watch. Okay. Oh, lights. Okay. No, no Coke. <laughs> I've got my drink. I've got my snacks. I've got everything I need to enjoy the history of Lego Star Wars World Records, a fucking feature length film about people that broke the game Lego Star Wars. Lego Star Wars, the complete... My understanding going into this, and I'm not going to pause a lot because it's a very long video, but... <laughs> My understanding going in this is that Lego Star Wars is like the the ultimate Zoomer game. Like if there's one game that hit at the perfect time for Zoomers, 
it's Lego Star Wars. This is my understanding. Uh, it's almost universally loved by Zoomers, uh, is my understanding. So it's kind of like a very interesting and perfect choice. Um, all right. What? Complete Saga. It's a game that millions played upon original release, and 15 years later, nostalgia is driving another wave of popularity. As more people play LEGO Star Wars, a question emerges. How quickly can the game be beaten? The LEGO Star Wars speedrun has the precision of a 3D platformer combined with the glitches and tricks of a broken NES game. And for the past few years, a dedicated community of runners have been battling each other to take the world record lower. This is the history of LEGO Star Wars World Records. Fuck, Vader. And now, a word from this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> For years, a player buy scanned it, the buy it, buy it, trilogy buy it, buy it. to Star Wars the video, but you'll also be helping me out quite a bit. Scan the QR code now and start playing today. Yeah. First, let's clear up any confusion with the timeline of the series. LEGO Star Wars The Video Game was released in 2005, where you could play Episodes 1 through 3. This was followed up by the original trilogy in 2006, with Episodes 4 through 6 being playable. Finally, in 2007, these games were combined into LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, mm. allowing you to play through all six episodes. While the three versions are all speed ran today, the most popular one by far is the Complete Saga, the topic of this video. Now, the earliest full game speedruns of the Complete Saga date back to 2013, but it's a bit of a hazy timeline. See, back then there was no concrete rule set. The initial method was to play through episodes 1 through 6 in order on the game's Super Story mode, which adds a timer to the bottom of the screen and doesn't have status screens between levels. Later, runners switched to playing the episodes on Replay Story, meaning you can use any red brick upgrade on any level. Isn't that Since busted? these records didn't have a standard rule set, and also some were filmed with a potato, <laughs> we'll skip going over them in detail. However, serious props should be given to the record holders. Wait, make sure I'm following so far. The first run didn't happen until 2013? The game was the fuck sold millions in 07 and they didn't make a run until 2013? Is that what he said? Why? That's weird. Poshact and Lexos, the champions of the Complete Saga's early era. For the next two years, Eight year olds had to become no teenagers. Would be set. <laughs> Facts. But in 2015, the community began to form once again. It's when Zoomers and learned for the type. first time, standardized <laughs> rules were created. All runs would be played on New Game instead of Replay Story. All Red Bricks, which are unlockables that give you a special ability, were banned. Mm. And you could only play with one player. Calling in Player 2 at any point was disallowed. These rules formed the backbone of runs starting in 2015. And the first record to abide by them was played by SM Kirky, clocking in at 3 hours, 44 Jesus. minutes, and 46 seconds. Now, this might seem long for a speedrun, but LEGO Star Wars is a long game. It has 36 levels, most of which take several minutes to get through. On top of that, there are also that nearly an record. hour of unskippable cutscenes between the levels. Oh, God. So, how did SM Kirky speed the game up? Well, his general strategy can be seen in Negotiations, the first level in Episode 1. He killed enemies and built objects needed to progress, but beyond that, he was running through everything as fast as he could. Oftentimes, there was no need to actually kill enemies, 
you could just perform tasks and ignore them. This is just how XGC plays games normally. <laughs> this is like, this is not even a speedrun. This is just like... <laughs> and if you die, you quickly respawn and can keep going. In level 2 of episode 1, SM Kirky showed off quick platforming, jumping through the stage while avoiding slowdowns. Another simple strategy used was on bosses. On fights like Darth Maul and Jango Fett, SM Kirky used the Jedi Slash over and over, the most effective way to drain the health of bosses. So thus far, it seems that SM Kirky was still following all the rules of the game. He was just doing the minimum possible and optimizing everything for speed. But no, there's more SM Kirky did we've yet to discuss. Because like I said earlier, LEGO Star Wars 2 of Episode 4, you normally have to build and push a block to progress through the stage. But if you instead veer off to the left and double jump off of a slope in the wall, you can make it to a platform and skip right through it. Once again, this saves roughly 14 seconds. And in Episode 5, one of the biggest skips in SM Kirky's run takes place. To end Level 2, you have to get on top of the Millennium Falcon, and the intended method to do this involves unlocking a door to release animals and jumping off of their backs. Tauntaun, specifically. Instead, SM Kirky precisely spaced Ooh! a double jump to barely reach the top early, That's actually high. saving 40 seconds. In all, there were more than a dozen tricks like this across the run, adding up to minutes of time save. There's honestly too many of them to go over in depth here, but many of them followed the same pattern, doing a precise jump somewhere you're not supposed to in order to skip doing something else that would take longer. We'll see more of these tricks later. But as a whole, SM Kirky's run was on another level compared to the runs from 2013. Fewer mistakes, more tricks, and a cleaner speedrun overall. It was a great starting point, and it stood as the record for almost a year. Well, that's all I want. That's all I want is to make a Hitman video and say it was a great starting point. <laughs> that's it. I'm not looking for more than that. I just wanted to show fucking my one of my fucking runs and go, it was a great, that's, that's it, dude. Fuck, dude, make a Hitman one. But in mid-2016, along came a player known as TSG. And what TSG did to the world record was this. Shit. <laughs> In 2016, a runner named TSG came onto the scene. By June, he'd have the world record. And over the next year, he'd do that nine more times. His dominance can be attributed to a few things. First, his skill level was well beyond that of any other runner. The only one who was close was SM Kirky, but he couldn't catch up. Second, this was an incredibly active period of discovery for the game. You'll see soon how many new tricks TSG was able to use. And third, TSG played the game on PC. This wasn't fully known at the time, but running the game on PC is much faster than any other version, mainly from having faster load times. Yes, TSG's sir. first record 49, was a 341 use, 17, and after the first level, he was presented with the option to save or not. After you save for the first time, you lose a couple seconds from auto-saving after every level. However, it does allow you to reset the game before a cutscene plays at the end of each episode, since your progress is saved before then. This allows you to more quickly start the next episode instead of watching a long cutscene especially after episodes 3 and 5, and the time save is further compounded from the fast resetting that you can do on PC. And of course, he had a plethora of new strategies to use, particularly in episode 5. One was in stage 5-2. C-3PO can't jump, so you normally have to build a cart to take him up this ledge. But instead, TSG just punched him and pushed him up, saving roughly 22 <laughs> seconds from not having to use the cart. That's sick. And in 5-4, you'd normally have to have Yoda teach Luke the Force and build bridges for R2 to use. 
But why do that when you can just use bad collision detection in the wall and get up anyway? <laughs> this was discovered by Grubo and saves a solid 30 seconds. That's right. But the most notable trick in the run was one known as DV3, short for Darth Vader 3. In this form of the fight, you're supposed to deflect objects into Darth Vader, then eventually glass comes down and you can jump across. However, it's just barely possible to jump across without the glass, <laughs> meaning you can skip the entire fight. You have three frames of leeway between the two jumps and the double jump. Oh, that's pretty and easy. It was easily the most difficult trick in the run. No. But if done properly, you would save over 70 seconds from not having to fight Darth Vader. And thanks to these three tricks and more, despite having some big slowdowns, TSG had his first world record. All greens, baby. His record streak would continue over the following weeks, and the run had a couple major changes. First, he changed the episode order, playing episode 5 last. Players were allowed to play them in any order they wanted, but putting episode 5 at the end was beneficial since its ending cutscene was the longest, and timing stops before the cutscene plays. This way, it's not included anywhere in the final time. Mm, I see. And the second change was the removal of a leaderboard rule. Red bricks were no longer banned. That meant he could use certain unlockables as he found them throughout the game. The two big ones he used were exploding blaster bolts, which lets you kill some enemies quicker and blow up certain barriers, and infinite torpedoes, which means you always have them behind you in the flying levels and don't have to go pick them up. Okay. Having these two upgrades across much of the run saved several minutes, and when combined with better execution of other tricks, allowed TSG to take the record under 3 hours and 30 minutes. New strategies were also getting discovered left and right, and in late 2016, one of the most obvious oversights from the developers was found by a player named Osumnal. On the last level of episode 1, Wait, you're so I understand. The red bricks are like these bonus super unlocks, but they allowed it, but only if you find them and unlock them in a new game, right? You don't, you don't can't just turn them on and then go into the game. Okay. Okay. Just making sure I understand. Okay. That, that seems fine. That seems fair. You're supposed to fight Darth Maul by forcing objects into him, but over on the right, there's a lamp. And for some reason, everything below the lamp is considered by the game to be out of bounds. You can stand and jump in any out of bounds area, so it's possible to just jump off the wall to the top of the lamp and across to the other side. <laughs> as simple as that, you could save 30 seconds. That's sick. By April 2017, TSG had taken the record to 3 hours and 24 minutes, and with second place more than 7 minutes behind, he was in full control of the world record. However, in May, a key rule was lifted. Back in August 2016, the ban on red bricks was lifted. And now, players were allowed to call in the second player. Oh shit. Welcome to the world of one player, two controller strats. <laughs> Wait, why would you allow this? Oh, what a pain in the ass. So what's the benefit of using a second player? Well, LEGO Star Wars was designed to be a two-player game, and some sections oh, can see. be completed much faster with the second player. In 4-5, for instance, if you have one player, you're supposed to build a cart to go over buttons fast enough before they turn red. But if you're using two players, no need for the cart. <laughs> There's a couple sets of these buttons in 4-5, and if you skip using the cart for both, you save a full minute. Jeez. However, you're not allowed to have a physical second player to help you out. Oh, uh, okay. You okay. have to do everything alone. <laughs> so, whenever you want to call in player two, you have to control them both at the same time. It's known as one player two controllers, or 1P2C. And on PC, there's three options for this. You can use two controllers, you can use two parts of the keyboard, or you can use a keyboard and a controller. <laughs> Most runners nowadays go with the keyboard controller method, but in June 2017, TSG set a record with the controller controller method. Jesus. The only point TSG used 1P2C in the run was in 4-5, but the community knew there could be applications elsewhere. 
Less than a month after TSG's run, oh, it guy? would be beaten by a new player, Rauschmore. He had been a contender for a while, but rapidly improved his personal best in mid-2017 to take the top spot. He too used 1P2C in Stage 4-5, and thanks to a couple new strategies in Episode 6, pulled ahead for a new world record by 90 seconds. Rushmore. However, TSG was up to the task, and just a week later he took the record back. Sheesh. By the end of the year, TSG's time was down to 3 hours, 19 minutes, and 30 seconds. Dude, just looking at the number of runs, and thinking about the ones that aren't world records, and each run is 3 hours. <laughs> 3 hours, 30 minutes. Bro, that is so much time. That is so much time playing LEGO Star Wars. And that's not even including the practice, that's just the runs. The 319 run had a notable new trick in the first phase of the Darth Vader fight. After dealing two hearts of damage, Darth Vader jumps around and won't knock Luke's Stormtrooper helmet off. You can then use R2 to precisely land on the white part of the panel, then fly and avoid a death plane to barely make it to the other side. Once there, you activate a platform for Luke, and open the door with the Stormtrooper helmet to skip nearly the entire fight. Sheesh! The trick, nicknamed DV-1, saves 45 seconds and was discovered by a runner named Zolus. When combined with DV-3, it was quite evident that Stage 5-5 was becoming the most critical point of the run. Speaking of Zolus, he would set the game's next record, a 316-12. He implemented 1P2C across the run more. Some were small time saves, like deflecting shots so that R4 could safely activate the panel in 2-2, and others were more substantial. In 4-5, you could now use Chewbacca to activate the elevator and ride it immediately, instead of having to use Han Solo and wait for its second cycle. A time save of about 12 seconds. Okay. But interestingly, Zolus played the game on Wii. We know from before that this is slower than the PC version, but there's another consideration to be made. The Wii version requires using both the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck, so to do 1P2C, you need to juggle four controllers <laughs> at once. Still, Zolus was able to pull it off, with a world record That's by over three minutes. Cracked. TSG followed this up a few months later with a 314-28. It was notable for implementing yet another trick into level 5-5. DV1 and DV3 already had skips, and now, Darth Vader's fourth form did as well. Wait, you fight Vader it was possible to do a couple of precise double jumps and skip having to use the Force and having to use R2. They have the potential to save about 7 seconds, and just added to the skill needed in 5-5. Episode 5 as a whole was we're becoming back, back, back. really brutal, and since it has the longest end cutscene, it had to be at the very end of the run. So let's take a look at our timeline so far. T back five seconds. ...of the run. So let's take a look at our timeline so far. TSG started dominating in mid-2016, and although he twice lost the record to Rauschmore and Zolus, he'd always been able to fight back. Two years later, his name was still on top of the leaderboard. But TSG's 314 from June 2018 would be the last record he would ever set. Oh shit! The game was about to enter a new era, because in October 2018, Rauschmore did this. Get roused. Over the span of just three weeks, Rauschmore took the record from a 314 down to a 309. The key was the rapid discovery of new tricks by a runner named L-Tree. Tricks that would save up to eight minutes. And the first one is really stupid. In 6-5, killing the Emperor normally takes a substantial amount of time. However, if you lure him over to the corner and die intentionally, upon respawning, you can just push him off the edge. <laughs> it skips the remainder of the fight and saves 45 seconds. <laughs> Later, it was discovered you could push him off at the start of the fight by calling in player 2. 
It saves an additional minute and is known as the Ultra Kill. <laughs> Another Good simple luck. boss skip was found in 4-3. You can skip the spy fight by using the force on R2. This pushes him past the trigger to start the fight, and if you call him in after, you can just go in the open door and save about 50 <laughs> seconds. That's sick! But the real big time save was in 6 3 Wait, that's sick. That's very clever. In this level, you're supposed to hop in your speeder and drive through the roughly 5 minute course. Yeah. Instead, if you go into the corner of the end barrier with both players, player 1 gets placed above player 2, and you can do a 360 to make it over the barrier. Wicked. This activates the end of the course, Wicked. and you can skip the entire thing to save several minutes. <laughs> That's where the coolest These discoveries I've helped lead to four consecutive records from Rauschmore. His fourth and final time, a 309 from October 2018, would be the final record set in the year. But interestingly, as the record stayed put at 309, the run started to get massive views on YouTube. Zoomers. It went semi-viral, and many people who saw the video thought it could be fun to try running it themselves. And largely thanks to Rauschmore's video, by early 2019, there was a new crop of runners ready to gun for the world record. Dot kids. In fifth place, there was Seenor with a 311.37. In 4th place, there was Wii Super, with a 310.45. In 3rd place, there was Osumnol, with a 310.06. The Super Invasion! And in 2nd place, <laughs> there was Shred, with a 309.54. Every single one of these four vapes. <laughs> Everyone, and Shred especially. Every one of them has popcorn lung. And it's good, it's, yeah, and that's what gives them their stamina in this game. All four runners were closing in on Rauschmore's record and it was obvious that one of them would beat it soon. The general consensus for the favorite to do so was Osumnal, but all four of them had a shot at it. And then, My money's on Shred. one of them broke through. Shred. <gasps> on February shit. 11th, 2019, Senor jumped straight from 5th to 1st place to capture his first world record. He lowered his personal best by nearly two and a half minutes in the process. Senor had gotten into the game after seeing Rauschmore's video, and although he lowered his time quickly, he was comfortably behind the other record contenders. But the key to Senor getting this record was 1P2C. He used it all over the run. He used it for multitasking, he used it to get one player in position while the other player built, he used cracked, it to push cracked, characters zoomer. further ahead. These were small time saves on their own, but they added up when used across a three hour run. This was also the first run to use the incredibly difficult disco skip in 6-2. After building the speaker, you then try and position Luke so he's exactly 50% inside of the speaker once it's finished being built. Okay. The game doesn't know what to do when you're inside a built object, so if you're next to a wall, it will sometimes push you through it, oh, meaning you can go out of bounds and skip building the disco party to save 40 seconds. <laughs> this is a really precise trick, since what you have to be sentence. positioned just right to clip out of bounds. But if you miss it, you can just break the speaker and build it to try again. With all the competition from top runners, people didn't expect Senor's record to last long. But it would only last for three days. On Valentine's Day 2019, Shred took the record with I fucking love Shred, dude. I fucking love this cracked out vaping zoomer named Shred grinding fucking Star Wars Lego speedruns on Valentine's Day. This guy's the giga chat of all these guys 158 IQ, dude. This guy's got martial arts world records. <laughs> the 30627. Shred had been running the game for over a year, but only became a serious record contender early in 2019. And his record was an improvement by nearly three minutes, which was especially impressive given that it was played on a Wii. It didn't do much new over Senor's record, but was better executed. It had a first try ultra kill and a cleaner episode 6 overall. 
Sinor fired back just three days later with another two-minute record improvement. The world record was now down to a 3.04, but it still had some significant slowdowns. Sinor, 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 Sinor how old are you? <laughs> I have to know. Sinor, how old are you? Important question. 19? <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, I salute a Zoomer legend. Uh, Zoomers rise up. Your king has arrived. I want to watch him. Lost nearly a minute on Disco Skip and over 30 seconds in 5 5 from missing the DV skips. So clean up those tricks, save a bit elsewhere, and add in a couple new strategies. And suddenly, sub 3 didn't seem out of the question. In March 2019, two runners started to pull Who's ahead get from the rest three? of the pack. Sinor uh -huh. and Wee Super. Oh, Both of these guys the had dust, only huh? gotten into the game in the last few months, but they lowered their time side by side and got good quickly. They raced each other frequently, and get the first sub three. Pog chain. Interestingly, about half an hour before the end of Sinor's run, Wee Super started a run of his own. And this run would finish as a 259.04. What? The world's second sub three. They both broke it in like the same time? That's epic. That's crazy. Sinor only lost time to take fat rips. <laughs> I heard that we super choked because Sinor blew a fat cloud of <laughs> cotton candy flavored vape in his face, dude. That's that's what I heard. That's just me picking it up off of. Had we super started his run just a few hours earlier, he would have won the race to sub three. But instead, he had to settle for second place while Sinor got the glory. But Sinor's record wouldn't last long. He beat his own run by 43 seconds just a day later. Jeez. This run was notable for introducing a piece of RNG. In 4-4, there's a section where Obi-Wan is supposed to appear across the room on a bridge after you arrive. The way the game tries to get him there is by running through a room with barrels. If he gets stuck behind a barrel, the game turns him to try and get around them, which slows him down, but he still eventually arrives on the bridge. Right. Usually. Sometimes he gets stuck. <laughs> and if that happens, he never shows up, and you can't progress through the level. Lego Star Wars is a broken game. Wait, that's now, not runners even... used to have a way- Like, you don't even cause that! That's not even a speedrunning trick! That's like an eight-year-old could be playing, and they get here, and they're like, why do I do next? <laughs> Wait, that could happen to anybody. That's so funny. You could literally just be a regular player and you get there and you know, what, what's happening? That's funny. Way around this, you reload the bridge room by entering and exiting the previous room, which guarantees Obi-Wan will show up for a two second time loss. But players then found 4-4 cutscene skip. By jumping off of this ledge, you can hook back and enter an out-of-bounds area to skip to the next room. This means a cutscene doesn't play and you save 18 seconds. However, as a consequence of the cutscene not playing, you can no longer reload the bridge room, since you wouldn't be able to leave the previous room if you enter it. So, Obi-Wan RNG was back into play. That's annoying. If he didn't want to show up, you were in big trouble. That's annoying. A couple weeks later, a fairly substantial Wait, change sorry. was made. Uh, how far in that in how, how far into the run is that? Cuz you just lose, right? It's a reset. Seymour, you're in chat. How far in the run is that? It's episode 4, so it's an hour in. An hour or 2 hours? That's so miserable. I would never. Oh, over 50 minutes? Kill me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking grinding out 50 minutes of good execution and then fucking Obi-Wan doesn't show up? I would rather die. That, no shot, dude. And you have fucking two controllers and you're juggling your fucking vape, dude. <laughs> 
You can't. There's no. Your hands are tired. Your lungs are fucking giving out. The community decided to alter the way runs were timed. Instead of starting when the players gained control in 1 1, it would now begin when selecting new game on the main menu. Okay. This was mostly done so that movement in the cantina would be considered in the final time. Okay. It added roughly 58 seconds to all runs. Oh, that's lame. So, when Senor set a record that would have been 257.36 under the old timing, it was retimed to 258.34. And that made it four consecutive records for Senor. He was Go the status. first to sub three, and now he was taking control of the leaderboard. And for Wii Super, he just couldn't catch up. Sorry. He perpetually remained slightly behind Senor. Silver Surfer. Easily in second place, but ever since he missed his chance at the first sub three, the world record eluded him. But after the 258.34, Senor announced that he would be taking a break from the category to focus his efforts elsewhere. Maybe this was the chance Wii Super needed. With Senor at least temporarily out of the picture, he could. All right, so we actually took over his channel. Yo, what's going on over there, Maddie? Oh. Is that my camera, bro? Dude, man, you just finessed me like this that. This is his YouTube channel. Bro. Channel. You finessed me. Really? You, you said I could have it. First time on my channel. You, you said <laughs> you bought Nate420's channel, man. 50 bucks. 50 bucks, that's It was all a pretty good deal, boys. I had to take it, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Maddie's <laughs> taking over from now on. You need to buy <laughs> Making this crazy vape video. What were we doing again? Oh, yeah, today we are doing the biggest vape cloud wins ten thousand dollars boys Sheesh. one of you could win 10k today i think i'm gonna beat this little <laughs> chump here look at this guy this dude i'm the only name. one that has vapes in my name you're a fucking smoker you're a toker i'm it's the only true. fucking vapor out here okay it does give you a slight advantage yeah but guess what a slight advantage i'm dude? a crazy okay boy. i'm a shoe in I'm we're gonna shoo -in. start we're gonna start with the salt nick no way i'm gonna lose this competition we're gonna start with the salt nick device and then we're gonna move on <laughs> okay. to the i'm not gonna watch this whole fucking <laughs> Anyway, he had a lot of hobbies, all right? That's why he took a break. Could hone in on improving his time without needing to compete with anyone. And as it turns out, just two days later, it was only record by a second, <gasps> but Wii Super had finally overtaken Senor. It was a run with a great early game, but he lost some time on speeder skip and had a weak episode four. Still, Wii Super had broken through. Was this a one-time deal, or was he about to make something more out of it? Six days later, a 60-second record improvement Sheesh. by Wii Super, largely due to saving time in episode 4. The very next day, another minute and a half world record. Three Jeez. weeks later, two record improvements on the same day. Three days later, a record cut by nearly okay, two relax, full minutes. Bro. Then we Super took a break. And when he came back, another world record. Seven records over the course of three months for We Super. Yo, no The passes, final please. one was a time of 253.04. After a while, Senor had come back to attempts, but this time the tables were turned. He was the one who couldn't catch up to We Super. The way he went on this run was through both improving his own skills and utilizing new strategies. In 2-6, Wii Super began using Dooku Skip. By standing on a barrel, you can force it with player 2 and clip under the floor. By then dropping out with the inbounds player, you can lead them forward past the trigger for the Dooku fight and enter the next room. The trick was found by Senor and saves up to 30 Senor's seconds. Senor's a bit of an innovator though. Wii Super also began using the Vehicle Smart Bomb Red Brick. It allows you to hold the special button in ship levels and make everything on screen explode, That's which can save you about 20 seconds in 5 Super powerful, one. yeah. And interestingly, with these new tricks being incorporated and runners' skill levels improving, someone new moved into second place. 
Chimkin. He had been in third place for months, even being a part of the initial sub-3 grind, but he always remained behind Wii Super and Senor. Got it. But he was improving, and by May, he was ahead of Senor. Sheesh. And sure enough, when Wii Super woke up on the morning of July 6th, his record was gone. Chimkin had beaten it by over a minute, getting a 252 flat. It was a run with a slow early game, but after a gold split in 3-2, he was off to the races. He pulled ahead of the Those record splits. and crushed it. So, we super had to get back to work. And it took him 13 hours to get the record back. <laughs> Over the coming okay, weeks and months, we super and Chimkin would trade the record back and forth. What's up, Chimkin? We super was the first to take an under 250 with a 249.55 on July 17th. Chimkin would get the next record, and by the end of the year, it was down to 245.39. How did these two take the record down by seven minutes? Yeah, it's crazy. Well, there was a new red brick, Fast Force, which does what it sounds like. It lets you force objects faster. To obtain it quicker, Chimkin found a method of going out of bounds, then doing a death warp to get back on track. It's unlocked in 4-2. So players started playing Episode 4 earlier in the run so they could use Fast Force in Episodes 6, 3, and 5. Good and innovation, course, Jim King. there were a plethora of new strategies discovered in the second half Jesus of 2019. <laughs> Some were small and saved a few seconds, while others saved closer to half a minute. <laughs> but the hype. big one was in 5-6. It's the last stage in the game, and it had an evolution of skips over the years. Way back during TSG's record reign, runners started doing a trick called Bespin Out of Bounds. Okay. You'd jump roll off a ledge to land out of bounds, okay. and progress forward in the stage to skip having to build C-3PO and okay. open a door. <laughs> it saved 45 seconds, but yeah, was sick. immensely difficult. Players used this trick for years, but in December 2019, level, Senor found something better. Senor innovating! You join with player 2 and put Lando in a doorway. If player 1 stands far enough away and Lando jumps, the door will close. If it closes while you're at the top of your jump, you'll get pushed <laughs> through the doorframe and out of bounds. Ultimately, you can get to the same room as you did from Bespin out of bounds, but it allows you to do so nearly a full minute faster and is much that's easier. That's hype. The only problem is that if you miss the door clip initially, AI characters can randomly run near the door and prevent it from closing, so you really want to get the trick first try. With all these time saves combined, and runners still improving their skills on top of that, the world record was down to a really solid 245. It was enough for Wii Super to take a break from grinding the category, and Shimkin it's gotta be so exhausting. It. It's gotta be so exhausting to grind this game. Uh, I just every run being three hours is so miserable, and the fact that you could be two and a half hours in and throw is just uh. as well. Other than those two, nobody had a and PB under two scenes, hours yeah. and fifty minutes. But over the coming weeks in late 2019 and early 2020 the game would get a huge boost in popularity, thanks to an unlikely source. TikTok. <laughs> that is the least unlikely source. That is the least un If you were to ask me what's the most likely way that a bunch more Zoomers got into speedrunning this, <laughs> that is the most likely, if I had to guess, dude. There was a big wave of nostalgia for LEGO Star Wars. Yeah, years. Millions played it while growing up, and after years had passed, they looked back on the game fondly. A trend began on TikTok where people changed their profile pics to mimic how they look in LEGO Star Wars, with a green or blue circle around them. This increased the game's popularity on the internet as a whole, as people remembered <laughs> LEGO Star Wars and wanted to experience it again. As such, speedrun streams and videos exploded in popularity, That's how and starting in early 2020, there was a new wave of speedrun activity. And suddenly, by February, 
Wii Super had new competitors on his doorstep. In second place was T-Fresh, and in third place was Led Astray. Both had a time of two... You gotta admire someone who can, like, I don't know, see a TikTok about LEGO Star Wars, think that game was fun, and then decide, all right, <laughs> there's, like, three guys who've been grinding it every day for the past two years. I'm gonna beat them. <laughs> I'm gonna start learning all their tricks, and I'm gonna beat them the next... That's crazy. Oh, what's up? T-Fresh and Chad, too. We got the... Every... <laughs> They're all here! The gang's all here! Hello! Lego Star Wars speedrunning community, okay? This is the congregating spot. 47, and both had aspirations for the world record. Wii Super had no choice but to do more runs if he wanted to defend his title. So he did. And in the span of just one week, he lowered the record twice, taking it down to 244.30. But Is Wii Super here? Is he lurking? Do, I, do we have the whole squad? I feel like we got everybody but Wii Super. He's taking all the records. Hey, everyone else in the call, what were you doing while Wii Super was not knocking out in 19? Oh, he's live. Okay, I got you, got you, got you, got you. Right, this yeah. wasn't the complete domination that he'd had earlier. His competition continued to close in. Led Astray got a 246, and a familiar face had actually jumped into Wait. second place. Sinor. The pressure he's was back. on for Wii Super. These guys were both... Sorry, wait one second. <laughs> this dude's grinding! <laughs> Bro, what are you guys doing I in my chat? My we supers on your fucking ass! My average, I'm not You guys are watching me react to the old average. runs. This guy's out here grinding for new ones! Alright, so another speeder clip right here. This one is a little more precise. I will watch that. Both capable of getting the record and could really obtain it any day now. We Super continued to do runs. And a couple weeks later, he achieved a run that put away any competition for the record. Sheesh. Green. Months of attempts had all led up to this moment. It was his ultimate run. Throughout the first four episodes, there were no significant mistakes. He gained a bit of time on nearly every level, and leaving episode 6, he was nearly two minutes ahead. That's awesome. The final two episodes are 3 and 5, and although they weren't perfect, they were good enough. And when combined with the incredible start he'd had, the end result was a monster world record. Wii Super wasn't at much risk of losing his title anymore. Or was he? <laughs> Senor wasn't deterred from the task at hand. Oh, Wii Super shit. was now three minutes ahead, but Senor knew he could close the gap. On March 27th, he took his PB down to 244, and on the okay. 31st, he shaved another half minute okay. off. Okay. Despite the optimization of Wii Super's record, Senor was actually able to close in. These two guys were ahead of the pack. It's cool. Just Senor's like back, the initial sub three grind. Chess Wii ways. Super and Senor were locked in a battle. Thanks to the game's boost in popularity around this time, the community decided to have a LEGO Star Wars speedrun tournament. Okay. Wii Super, Senor, and most of the game's other top runners all participated. Like it was a double elimination to... tournament, oh, my God. and there were some great times. <laughs> Dude, I... <laughs> What is it with T? Who the fuck needs a double elimination three hour 1v1? Bro, who, what, who TO'd this? Dude, that's, that's absurd. That's absurd. That's absurd. That is an absurd decision. <laughs> Dude, imagine coming from losers and you win in losers and you have to do a fucking eight hour final. That's absurd, dude. <laughs> you do not need to double the limb. Just do a different tournament later. That's crazy. Times put up by several different runners. But when all was said and done, after the brackets were completed, who else would meet in the finals but Wii Super and Senor? These two would get the benefit of a big new strategy discovered a few weeks ago in 6-1. Spiderless. Spiderless. By using a forcible object, you could clip into the wall, which was faster than the old method of using the spider. Oh. 
You can then come back in bounds to touch a grade, which acts as a trigger for the game to send you straight to the boss fight and skip the cutscene. Oh. This trick saved a full 60 seconds. A huge yeah, advantage for any crazy. runner who could pull it off. <laughs> Up to this point, Sinor had lost one match while We Super was undefeated. So to win the whole thing, Sinor needed to win twice while We Super <laughs> needed. Fuck. That's exactly what I was talking about! Dude, fuck that! Legitimately fuck that. That's ridiculous. That's so that is not you and me can't focus for that long. That has just done fucking three, four matches, and now he has to do a back to back. That's ridiculous. <laughs> just one win, and Sinor handily won the first game. We Super accidentally soft locked in five dash one, losing several minutes and allowing Sinor to cruise to an easy victory. That meant there would be a winner take all match the next day to oh, determine the tournament day. champion. <laughs> okay. This was going to be a tough task wow, for Sinor. Think of all he had going against them. His personal best was nearly a minute behind Wee Super. He had lost to him earlier in the tournament, and he had gotten a pretty lucky victory yesterday thanks to a fluke soft lock. Luck? He was gonna need to play out of his mind this if he wanted to win this thing. Okay, he doesn't need luck. And so, on April 19th, 2020, in the final match of the tournament, with his opponent heavily favored to win, Ooh! this was Sinor's first Ooh! world record in over a year, back when the run was 16. I gotta say, Sinor, getting world record in a race, in a live race, that's ghost, that's crazy. That's so rare. That's so unlikely. The flying clutchman. <laughs> a minute yeah, slower. That's sick. And it was actually a close race through much of the run. But Sinor eventually pulled ahead. And although We Super finished with a 242, he didn't stand a chance. Sinor won the match, he won the tournament, and he got the world record. That's got to feel And the good. race to sub 240 was officially on. Once again, Sinor and Wee Super were the two competitors. As it turns out, Sinor's time at the top wouldn't last long. Wee Super wanted the record back, and it took him just five days to do so. He got a 240 32. This run was actually on sub 240 pace until 5 5. But the last two stages of the run... So right about now in the timeline is when we hit COVID. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are following along, but this is right about the time we're going to hit lockdown and COVID, which means I'm sure the runs are about to get absolutely absurd. <laughs> we were locked at home uh, on fucking Zoom class. Are about to play Lego Star Wars like we've never seen before, dude. It's about to unlock a whole new fucking dimension of grind. Run are two of the toughest. We Super lost a lot of time to DV3 in 5-5 and to Door Clip in 5-6. Sub 240 would have to wait. No, get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> he fucking kills the NPCs. <laughs> oh, we not super working. lost 45 seconds to door clip and missed sub 240 by just four seconds. Wait, it's still a world record? It's a great example of how tough the end of the run is. Door clip is in the very last stage, and if you miss it initially, bad luck can make you lose the record. Bro, how 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 long is the last cutscene? Like, why don't you just do this level first? <laughs> Say, fuck it. 
eat the cutscene, you know? If, if People are winning these records by like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. How long could that cutscene be? Is an extra 5, 10 seconds? Over the following few weeks, competition caught up. A couple runners named Pickletoe and Ginger Legend got times in the 241 range, increasing the pressure on Wii Super. And on July 14th, Senor had a run on sub 240 pace in okay. the 5-6. Okay. But once again, Doorclip killed it. This goddamn Doorclip. He ended door up clip. one second behind the world record. We Super had waited too long. Bro, did any of my fellow uh, Lego Star Wars speedrunners ever just get pissed off at Doorclip? You know what I'm saying? To all my, to all my many Lego Star Wars speedrunners in chat, can we all just <laughs> fucking, can I get a hell yeah? You know what I'm saying? Does anyone ever, I don't know if you anybody can relate, relate to this, but sometimes it just pisses me off, dude, when I'm trying to do that door clip and it doesn't fucking work. For real. <laughs> Long. Other players had caught up, uh, and it was a agree. dead heat for the first sub 240. But on July 22nd, toe? We Super had a run with a fantastic first few episodes. He then Wii lost Super. his helmet in 4-5, but a great episode six put him back in the lead. Mm -hmm. He had a rough 5-5, but with time to save in 5-6, sub 240 was still possible. He got door clip quickly and left just enough room That's what I'm talking to about. sub 240. 239 Look at the chat going nuts. That's Wii tight. Super had won the race. This was Wii Super's 22nd world record. Bro, is Pickle Toe in chat too? <laughs> No, you're fucking joking. You made that up. The guy was in random third place on that one thing he's in chat. Holy shit, the gang's all here. <laughs> all right, well, that's kind of a spoiler. Because I'm going to assume, Pickle Toe, that you, you fucking come out of nowhere on this leaderboard. He'd face <laughs> competition from some of the best in the world. Because you wouldn't but show up in a random again, third place spot. He had you proven know he could come out on I top. I feel like I'm getting a spoiler With here. With his sub 240 goal accomplished, we Super finally felt he could take a break. And the runners in second through fourth place, Senor, Pickle Toe, and Ginger Legend, mm -hmm. have lost motivation after being beaten to the first sub 240. So, they all stopped running the category as well. Oh shit. For the first time Category in death. many months, there was little activity at the top of the leaderboard. That meant there was technically an opportunity for someone outside of the top four to swoop in and make a move. No. Let's take a look at who was in fifth place. This is E Road, e -road House. House. He had been E Road House check. <laughs> e Road House check. Wait, he got timed out for spam? <laughs> all doing here bro let me check if i can untime out fucking user e road house dude he was timed out by yeti for an hour 28 minutes <laughs> oh <laughs> he was fucking spamming the senor copy pasta senor is hands down the best at lego star wars not only does he have natural talent for the game he also puts in the time and effort to continually improve his skills. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of all the characters and abilities. Okay. All right. I can see there's some plausible. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Please don't spam. <laughs> Copy pasta. <laughs> but. All right. Time to see your fucking crazy run. Here we go. I've been running the game for about three months and managed to quickly enter How? the game's top How? five. How? I don't get it. How does someone come into a game people have been grinding three-hour runs for two years and then in three months catch up? I don't... Maybe learning new tricks is... You can just start with a fresh mind, I guess. You said it, COVID. <laughs> no joke, dude. 24-7 grinding. However, during the sub-240 grind, he was comfortably behind the big four runners. He wasn't considered to have a serious shot at the world record. But with all four of them stepping aside, this was his chance. In early August, he stepped into fourth place and lowered his PB down to 241.12. Mm -hmm. And on August 10th, 
He got on a run where he pulled about 15 seconds ahead of the record by the end of episode 4. There was still a long way to go, but he kept- Level 1-4 is the pod race. You have to drive around the course three times to beat the stage. This looks fun as hell. For years, there was no way to really speed this up. Even the fastest world records just drove the three laps. Why would you want to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why would you want it? It looks really fun. Even a speedrunner knows that you don't want to skip the fun parts. <laughs> it, looks, it looks fun as shit, dude. It reminds me of uh, uh, episode one racer on the 64. That game fucking ruled. <laughs> but in mid-2020, P53, Havster, and Sinor combined to develop a trick called oh Pod Fraud. It's a very complicated <laughs> trick, but the gist the of it of the is mines. that the game's only method for checking lap completion is seeing if you've touched an area on the far side of the course, and seeing if you've touched the finish line region. So after driving a lap normally, you go out of bounds with two players, leave one by the finish line region, and try to get the other to the far side. <laughs> this middle section out of bounds kills you, but it lets you build up speed quickly. So, what? by dying a few times, you can build up enough speed to make it across. By touching this region, the next lap is activated, and you skip having to drive around. This setup takes about 25 seconds, but a lap normally takes about 60, so you save over half a minute. The other big skip is called Grieve Cheese, discovered by Pickletoe with concepts from Pickle Toe! The general Grievous fight is normally a slow, scripted battle, where you jump around the level and then attack him on the main platform. However, he'll only perform his scripted actions if you're actively standing on this platform. So, you can use Obi-Wan to lure him toward a rock, then jump off the platform and shoot him with player 2 before he walks too far away. By repeating this over and over, you can drain his health without having him ever perform scripted actions. Get on. Unfortunately, Get on. there's RNG involved. He can randomly block your shots, which wastes time. But ideally, Grieve Cheese can save over half a minute. With all this and more, we super felt that he could cr- Must have really hated that fight, huh, Pickle Toe? Uh... To grind that, because that looks miserable. <laughs> also, uh... Hush the current oh, record. And he was right. On September 18th, he beat E. Roadhouse by just under two minutes, getting a 237.49. A few weeks later, he did it again with a 236.08. The leaderboard was back to normal. Yeah, the thing that's craziest about this game that I've seen is that every skip is like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, I mean, like, the skips in this game are huge. <laughs> uh, this is like, this is many years into running and they're still coming up with like full minute long skips, which is like, this game is broken. <laughs> Wii Super was dominating the competition multiple minutes ahead of anyone else. And still, Years Somebody after his first chat. world record, nobody could catch Wii Super. At least, not for a couple weeks. Just 16 days after Wii Bro, Super's 236, E Roadhouse managed to get the record back. The key to doing this was yet another complicated new trick. Okay. Falconless. The normal way to end stage 4-5 Well, here's my question. Somebody thought while you're here. Um... The research for these videos. Are you just are you pulling all these guys in a call and you're having them explain it to you? Is that how, how how the fuck are you picking this up from Is it is it like heavily interview based? It takes weeks. I, I couldn't see the last one. He does the runs himself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. This is summoning salt. Ha <laughs> ha.
<laughs> he could actually beat every single person at every single run that he's covered, but he chooses not to because he's a journalist. Involves activating four triggers scattered throughout a big room, then killing all the stormtroopers. It's a slow process that gradually raises the Millennium Falcon, so you can eventually enter it and end the level. However, P-53 found a way to end the level early. You first have to load the last room of the level, well, this looks good. which can be done- well, This guy's clearly playing on PC with like a high res pack or something. <laughs> the game looks way better right here. Wait, P-53, are you here by the way? This by entering this up. grapple room. You then go back far in the level, and by crossing a particular line, the game tries to save memory by unloading the last room. This means the triggers, stormtroopers, and Millennium Falcon all disappear. The issue is that the game never reloads them once you go back forward. So you re-enter the final room, and nothing's there. Since the stormtroopers are gone, the game treats them the same as if they were killed, so you can jump into where the open door would be, and the level ends. <laughs> this saves about a minute and 15 seconds, and E Roadhouse's new record was a 234.51. That means that even without e Falconless, you, he still would have beaten Wii Super. Maybe it was a fluke. Whenever someone took the record from Wii Super, he was always quick to respond. But yeah, a I mean, month later, I can tell he's a grinder because he's grinding right now. He's live grinding more runs, and this video just came out. This dude's out here grinding. E Roadhouse set another record, 234.32. This was uncharted territory. When was he going to? Based on the length of this video, I assume that every single Zoomer in my chat has at one point set a world record in LEGO Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I assume every single one of you is here because your name shows up at one point in this video. To respond. Well, he was more than never four minutes Never seen a 232 and never fucking will, dude. His insane pace. E Roadhouse, my road dog. <laughs> more like E Goat House. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. He's playing. Somebody saw it is using his tropes against us. He always sets up like that when they choke, but then he flipped it. <laughs> Second place. There was nothing more he could do. There was nothing anyone could do. E Roadhouse was the game's new top runner. And it was hard to imagine this record being beaten anytime soon. Yeah, it's tough to top. So he took a break. Since nobody else had a personal best below 236, there were no challengers for the record. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> However, that didn't stop players from continuing to run the game. But the nature of the competition changed. It was now a battle for second place <laughs> Dude, rather than the That's actually such a fat fucking lead. Nobody else in the game was within five minutes. <laughs> that's crazy. That's so cracked world record. About a month after the 231, a new runner moved into second, Ginger Legend. A few days later, he'd be beaten by Sinor, getting a 235 oh, and then a 234. Oh! It's important to note that there were very few new strategies being utilized. The vast majority of their time save came from getting better at the game. Fewer mistakes, better movement, that sort of improvement. Right. By February, a runner named Zack achieved a 235, and by March, there was a trio of runners with a 234. Sinor in second place, Ginger Legend in third place, and Zack in fourth place. Check for Zack. Zack in chat. Wait, it's Zack Muffin Zack? <laughs> Don't tell me. Tell me Zack Muffin is not this Zack. You came in like Kramer, dude. You said, what up, big A, big fan? <laughs> right as your name came up. Is that you? <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Why am I using a Seinfeld reference for this audience? Uh... <laughs> you came in like Spencer and iCarly. 
You had like the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys get it? All right, cool. For the first time since he set his mammoth world record, E Roadhouse was feeling a bit of pressure. They were still minutes away from his record, but their times were dropping. So he decided to end his break and go back to record attempts. Oh, he's back, huh? But he struggled to get good runs going, especially compared to his incredible 231. Yeah, it's a little demoralizing. On March 6th, Senor would once again lower his second place time, 23305. He was now within 90 seconds of the world record. That's still huge. E Roadhouse continued his attempts, but failed to get anything good. And then on March 9th, Zach got on a run that was even with the world record through episode 2, then actually gained half a minute over oh. the record in episode 4. Zach attack? Once again, this was mostly due to better gameplay rather than new strategies. He ended up losing time to the incredible episodes 6 and 5 in E Roadhouse's record, but still finished with a 232.23. Zach was just 35 seconds off the world Jeez. record. Senor had a 233. Zach had a 232. And E Roadhouse. Hey, what's going on? I can't see what's going on in chat. Everyone's fucking spamming something. What's. Oh, mods? We got a mod in here, right? Bad man on the loose. Uh, I think we got a mod. Uh... <laughs> Zach Muffin commenting his own run says, uh, What a fucking choke, Omega Lol, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> House had a 231. All three of them were doing attempts, and all three of them had potential to get the world record. E Roadhouse's time had run out. He was now in direct competition with two strong runners. There was no question the world record was coming down. The question now was get it. which of these three was going to do it first? Well, on March 22nd, E Roadhouse broke through. He's it was back, only a baby. five second record improvement, but it showed that he still had what it took. This run had another fantastic early game, but he lost about 45 seconds in episode 6 from repeatedly missing Disco Skip. Episodes 3 and 5 were up and down, but since his gameplay overall had improved, it was enough to eke out a small record. But his work wasn't done yet. A couple weeks later, E Roadhouse got a 231.35. Another small He's record improvement, but he was making progress while Zach and Senor weren't improving their times. <laughs> Still, <laughs> all three. He's saying, don't bother, dude. That kind of run is saying, don't bother. <laughs> I'm not stopping. You're not going to pass me. Don't bother. Go back to your six minute <laughs> slower runs. <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's a warding people off run. Three runners continued to grind over the following weeks. The end goal had shifted. It was officially a grind for the game's first sub-230. A half hour barrier hadn't been broken in two years. That's crazy. In mid-May, Senor lowered his time down by over- Crazy the run is now a full hour faster than when it started. <laughs> They've cut off a full hour of the game. For half a minute. All three runners were now within 60 seconds of each other. Who would get sub 230 first? Would it be the veteran, the newcomer, or the current world record holder? Well, on May 14th, E Roadhouse got on a run with another incredible first couple of episodes. Once again, this was his best pace ever leaving episode 2. He faltered a bit in levels 4-2 and 4-3, so his pace cooled off slightly exiting episode 4. 
but after episode 6, he was still a minute ahead of the record. It was clear that this would be a golden opportunity for the sub-230. For the, for the speedrunners in chat, you can practice every level individually, right? Like, you don't have to just practice with... Like, most of your practice time is just picking one level and grinding it, right? Okay, because that would be so fucking miserable. If you, <laughs> if you had to keep starting from the beginning, it sounds... Okay, that's not that's not so bad. See, when you're doing runs, you're kind of like already prepped and you've grinded every... Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, that's more like Hitman. Because like when I practice Hitman, I don't do fucking runs. I just I just pick a few levels, usually the ones in the later half, and I grind them. It just makes... Okay. They and then, in episode 3-1, something strange happened. E. Roadhouse was cycling through his splits to see what time saves he had left. Okay. And he accidentally paused his timer. Oh, no. He realized this a short while later and unpaused it. Oh, no. But this threw everything off. His pace would now seem better than it really was. He didn't know how long it was paused, so if this run went all the way, he'd have to retime it to see what he really got. Okay. Well, E. Roadhouse made his way through episode 3, and it went beautifully. Episode 5 got off to a great start, and entering 5-5, he was a minute 21 ahead. Okay. But of course, his real actually. pace was still a mystery. Yeah. 5-5 was solid, and 5-6 was nearly perfect. Wow. And when he stopped his splits, they read 229.35. Okay, but... E. Roadhouse knew his run was slower than that, but the exact amount wasn't known. It all came down to how long the timer was paused. So, it had to be retimed. And the exact length of the pause- Bro, who is the mod? Cause I want you to know, for every game like this on fucking SRC, the mod is always like, almost always one of the top runners. <laughs> so, one of you comp competitors was also the guy reviewing this and fucking retiming it. I want you to know that. The mods are always the runners. Fucking Zach, Zach Muffin was probably retiming this thinking, I'm going to fucking add 30 seconds. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, it was me. No, are you serious? That's so funny if it was you. <laughs> Oz would determine if this was the world's first sub-230. That was my joke answer. That's so funny. <laughs> Oh, fucking funny. <laughs> All right, or if see. the anyway, race would right, continue. Whatever, 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 whatever. Hey, get, after get the retime, mm. they found that E. Roadhouse's timer was paused mm. Pause for 21 and a half seconds. Okay, what does that meaning mean? Meaning his run was a 229.57. By the skin of he his teeth, it. he had done he it. He fucking did his it! His sixth world record in a row was his most important one yet. E. Roadhouse officially had the world's first sub-230. In the aftermath of this run, Zack and Sinor continued doing PB attempts for a short while. Both players lowered their times, but neither could catch up to E. Roadhouse. Their motivation had just dried up. Damn, it seemed like another community quit. break would be in order. <laughs> but you're probably noticing a pattern by now. Whenever community motivation is at a low point, New tricks are always found to bring people back in. And right on cue in May 2021, two massive tricks were discovered. One of them was a 30 second time save in 3-5 found by Los. But the one we're gonna go over was the one discovered in 5-5. This trick was notable for two main reasons. Okay. For one thing, it was in the toughest stage of the run. 5-5 was already a completely broken level. Yeah. You had DV1, DV3, and the DV4 jumps. Yep. The new trick, fittingly, DV5. was called DV2. Fuck. <laughs> Every room of the Darth Vader... Of course, of course it was. <laughs> that makes so much more sense. Yeah, no, I got that. That makes sense. <laughs> right. No, yeah, totally. totally. I was testing you guys, and it was TV... DV2. You guys just don't know about DV5 yet. That's the thing is you guys don't even know because I've been innovating. You think I haven't been grinding? You think I haven't been putting a little time off stream? DV5, baby, it's going to fucking blow your minds. Their fight now had a skip. And the other notable thing about this trick 
It was the most difficult one in the entire game. That's right. The toughest trick of the run was now in a stage that was already considered to be the hardest. This is the insanity of DV2. You start by activating a moving platform outside the boss room, then okay. positioning Luke on a panel beneath it and placing R2 on the platform. Okay. When the platform moves down, you can collide into Luke as he's sliding off the panel. <laughs> if done at the perfect moment, Luke will go through the wall under the floor of the next room and you can just walk underneath the boss fight. Oh, that's right. Getting the clip into the wall is so precise that pause buffering is used to help line it up. Right. And even so, every single step of this trick is hard. It's hard to get on the panel, it's hard to stay on the panel, it's hard to pause buffer at the right time, okay. it's hard to line up Luke, it's hard to line up R2, it's hard to avoid going too low in the boss room, it's hard to avoid going too high. Worst thing is, is what is the punishment if you miss it? Like, do you, where do you reset from? How much time is lost each time you miss it? Because that's, if it's really punishing on each loss, then, then it's, then. I in the boss room, any of these portions not being done correctly results in a miss. But if done properly, it would save an additional 50 seconds. Sheesh. A team of LavaFang407, Note KO, and EJP Man created DV2, and it made Stage 5-5 a nightmare. Tough trick after tough trick, right at the end of the run. But with all the time save potential, people had to go for it. They had to go and for it. And it brought runners Zack and Sinor back to doing runs. They, they each got times of 2.30. And then on June 1st, Sinor set the world record. He did it! They had a rough episode 6 particularly a slow He's ultra back. kill in 6-5, but he got DV2 on his second try. A fantastic result for such a tough trick. He closed it out 20 seconds ahead of the Roadhouse. Sinor's first world record in over a year. Back when the run was- Bro, Sinor, you just show up every year to take the world record back? <laughs> Is that your whole thing? You just, every, every year on fucking Christmas, you show up and take the world record back for eight days? <laughs> Remind everybody you still got it. It was 12 minutes slower. So now, of the top three competitors, only one had yet to get the world record. Zach. He'd been in the top three for the past five months, even moving into second place on several occasions, but he had never been able to take the top spot. It's because he's busy retiming everyone else's fucking runs. Get your timers right! And Zach doesn't have to fucking check the SRC logs. And he can actually do some of his own runs. It was frustrating. He knew he was good enough. He'd been on pace before. And he also had a bit of time on his hands coming up. So, Zach decided to start a devoted grind for the record. But this wasn't going to be just any grind. Okay. He was going to play the game... 14 to 15 hours per day <laughs> until he set the world record. <laughs> Zach began on his quest, and over the next two weeks, he played the game for roughly 200 hours. Run after run, good pace after good pace, oh, and despite all that, shit. he didn't achieve a world record. In fact, he didn't even get a PB. <laughs> Zach remained in third place, behind E- Oh no, dude. Oh no. That's demoralizing, bro. 200 hours fucking straight and you know PB? You know what though? I think he's building to something. E Roadhouse and Sinor. Disappointing for sure, but Zack would still get another chance. Because on June 13th, runners Zack, E Roadhouse, and We Super oh, no, all race? met up to grind for the world record 12 hours a day, with <laughs> Seymour also participating at home. <laughs> Only 12 hours may have been less than Zack was Wait, used. Wait, you guys were all together? Wait, you guys were all in the same location? Grinding 12 hours a day? That's actually so fucking hype. 
Just a hype house. It's just a DJ house. <laughs> Nade shot could never, dude. 100 Thieves content house can get fucked from the. I would want. <laughs> I want to see this house. Still, but still, four of the best runners in the world, 12 hours per day for three days straight. Surely, you know oh. there? Smell like fucking cotton candy, bro. The clouds were blowing. World record was incoming, but it never happened. 72 hours came and went with no world records. And here's why. Pressure. Between all four runners, more than 20 world record paces were achieved into the final two levels. All of them died to DV2. <laughs> it was such a hard trick. That sucks. And trying to execute that it sucks. when feeling the pressure of a record paced run. Yeah, especially when you're in a house and another one's cheering you on and there's a pressure that. Yeah, I get Good luck that with stuff. that. So for Zach, a grind of 12 hour days hadn't worked. 14 hour days hadn't worked either. Yeah. So he had only one remaining option. <laughs> On June 6th. There's multiple. <laughs> I want you to know, Summoning Salt, with the way you're phrasing this, there are multiple options in this situation. <laughs> you could reduce the number. You're, there's not. <laughs> 16th, Zach began a grind of 16 hour days to get the Lego Star Wars world record. <laughs> That's what you were missing those last two hours. Not sleep. And he never had any runs on record pace. <laughs> it was starting to seem hopeless. Okay, I, I listen, I don't know if this ends up working out, but my theory would be that grinding the game for 16 hours is going to make you so frustrated and have bad sleep and your brain goes dumb that, of course, you're not going to make any real progress. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need to grind and get some sleep and eat well, and then your improvement's going to go... That, that's not... <laughs> But on June 18th, Zach finally got a run deep ahead of the record. Oh? And what a pace it was. Entering 5-5, his best Practice possible paid off? time was 228.43. That was a good enough pace that he didn't even need to do DV2. He could get the record without it. Oh, he skipped But it. Zach was committed to going oh, for it. He didn't skip it. And on just his third try, he got in the wall. If he could just make it to the end of the room, he'd be in the clear. I did not make it. But walk. disaster struck. He went too low and died, <laughs> forcing him to start DV2 over again. Zach, your runs are heartbreakers, bro. You're heartbreakers. I relate to you the most because I am also a... Uh, I throw hours at it rather than... <laughs> Oh, that that's that's a true grind, you know? He right. lost over a minute and ended up missing the record by just seconds. Had he skipped doing DV2, he would have had the world record. Yeah, but so you want the record no one can beat, you know? More long attempt sessions, more failed runs. But on June 24th, you don't want to tap it find in. Find himself wanna... in an eerily similar situation. A best possible time of 228.08 into 5-5. Okay. Once again, he could skip DV2 ah, and that, still dude. get the record. Fuck that. But once again, he was committed to going for it. Respect. It was a decision that cost him the record last time. But this time, he hit it first try. Oh, shit. He was in a golden position now. Don't he fought, closed don't out 5-5, got door clip. Uh-huh. And when Zach entered the Millennium Falcon he to end 5 6, he, he had just set a new world record yeah! by over a minute. Yeah! After months of grinding and hundreds yeah! of hours of world record attempts, Zach's efforts were vindicated. That's actually so. makes me really happy because you don't want to see someone throw 400 hours or something and then not get a BB <laughs> and just be like, well. <laughs> That was because you know what I'm saying. You have to get it at the end of the day, and he did do it. He brought it home. He didn't quit. I like that he didn't quit. He didn't fucking quit, dude. You, there had to be times you were so fucking frustrated with this game. <laughs> uh, you had to be like, this game fucking sucks. I'm so fucking pissed. <laughs> uh, you mean you had to be just deeply, deeply, deeply frustrated.
two, 400, 300 hours playing every day and not, oh man, I would be so mad. Yeah. This record didn't stop others from trying. Senor, We Super, and E Roadhouse all continued doing record attempts after the in-person meetup. But eventually, their attempts stopped. In large part because 5 5 was such a demoralizing stage. Right. So, throughout the rest Only of the 2021, grinder, Zach's time remained at the top of the leaderboard. He went from not being able to set the record to holding the top spot for six months straight. Jeez! In early 2022, Zach decided to come back to the game. It had taken him hundreds of attempts and many months of grinding to set his world record. But with no records being set, a big opportunity was going to waste. So, in an attempt to get the game a new world record, the community decided to organize one more big event. It was going to be another four-day break the record <laughs> session. But instead of the game's top four runners competing, this time they expanded it to the top ten. Oh shit! Ten runners, four days, and a goal time of 2.26. Oh shit. This is pretty cool. These I've never really seen this idea. Um, getting all the top runners to go to the same place and like grind. That's actually, that's like a sick concept. Even with this many runners, nobody knew for sure if a new record would be set. But one thing that wasn't in doubt was that there would be a lot of movement on the leaderboards. Zach and E Roadhouse were in first and second place, and they were the favorites to lower the record. Just behind them were Bacon Soda and Bricko. Bacon Soda still with D Bacon Soda check. <laughs> bacon Soda, you here? He's asleep. Okay, <laughs> he's a Swedish. Okay, all right, <laughs> confirmed, understood. Man, this is a tight knit community. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a tight knit community. I will say that, and I give you credit for that. Decent odds to get the record, and beyond them was a mix of prior record holders and newer contenders. Jared and Chad, their too, personal what's up? bests ranged from Zach's 227 down to a 233, but all of them knew. Jared, why are you so slow, bro? <laughs> Jared, what the what? What the 233, bro? It's embarrassing. It's what what the hell is going on, brother? <laughs> You're slacking. This is a, you, you were showing up to the in-person event. <laughs> you better step it up, Jerry. I'll keep an eye on you. That's right. That's why. That they had a serious chance to move up on the leaderboard. I'm inspiring him. Let the world record attempts begin. Zach and E Roadhouse. Wait, he was born in 97. Oh, he's the old man of the group? <laughs> oh. Uh, Jerry's the grandpa of the group, born in 97. His knees giving out. I'm 19. <laughs> okay, well then never mind. <laughs> Someone said you're born in 97. Uh Jared hit triple digits. <laughs> no, he's fine. <laughs> this may have been in the best positions to lower the record, but fourth place runner Bricko got the first good chance. Bricko! Just hours into day one. I like Bricko because I think it's the coolest name. I give the official best username to Bricko. If you're going to speedrun Lego Star Wars and your name is Bricko, I think you're already a big advantage. He had a run with a best possible time of 225.46 into episode three. There was still a ways to go, but it was easily on world record pace. Unfortunately, a poor episode 3 cost him the record, but he still got a 227.47. This was good enough for second place. It was a right big behind. motivator for the rest of the group, it's especially possible. for the recently demoted to third place, E Roadhouse. And toward the end of day one, both he and Zach found themselves on record pace in the 5-5. But DV2 would strike again. Ugh, e Roadhouse finished with a 228-25, and Zach got a 227-45. Zach's time was faster than every runner on the leaderboard, except for his own record. 
Day one Chad. had come and gone, and despite movement from some top runners, no new records were set. Day two featured a couple PBs from runners in the top 10. We Super got a 25 second PB cut, and Cnor moved from fifth to fourth place. Nice. But for most of the day, none of the top runners got anything on world record pace. Then, late in the night, after most runners were done for the day, Zach had a run with 227.11 potential dude. into 5-5. But of course, he still had to get DV2. First try? And first he try. actually did it first try. He's the GOAT! This was the best chance of the event. He had one tough trick to go. Door skip. Door clip. Oh! And unfortunately... What was that dive, Zach? What was that dive? You know you gotta hit it at the apex of your jump. Everybody knows that, dude. Come on. It's like, everybody knows you don't do a dive there. You gotta light yourself up. Bro, I'm sorry, but let's come on. Can we get on the same page here? Uh... <laughs> he couldn't get it. Like, do you even he want the record? He lost 20 seconds and finished with a 227.38. Is that a new record? The best time of the event so far, but still ah. no world record. Frustrating. Day three featured several more promising runs from Zach. He achieved numerous 227s, but none were low yeah, enough to beat the record. There was a bit of movement from lower ranked runners, as It's Jared moved from 10th to 8th place. That's what I'm talking about, Jared! All right, picking it up. Okay. See, I motivated him retroactively. Okay. He's climbing. But as day three was coming to a close, the record remained at Zach's 227.19. Time was starting to run out. The game's top runners had gotten close, but nobody had been able to break through. But then, toward the end of day three, those runners would get a bit of extra motivation. With all this attention on LEGO Star Wars speedruns, a new strategy was found in the Grievous fight. Oh shit. Before, Grieve Cheese could be used to get a quick kill, but it was inconsistent as he would randomly block your shots. But by switching your resolution to 800 by 600 <laughs> instead of 1920 by 1080, the quick kill becomes much more consistent. On average, you save 10 to 15 seconds. This wasn't an enormous time save, but it was enough to give these runners a pretty big boost. Yeah. Yet still, day three came to a conclusion and no world records were set. Was that trick invented by people there? Or was there some dude who was like sad and upset that he didn't get invited to the 10 man Lego fest and invented the trick at home? Bacon Soda found it? Was he at the event? I don't know. I didn't see. He was invented? Okay. Extra motivation. Okay. With all this attention on Lego Star Wars speedruns, a new strategy was found in the Grievous fight. Before, Grieve Cheese could be 20 by 10. You save 10 to 15 seconds. This wasn't an enormous time. Still, day three came to a conclusion and no world records were set. 24 hours to go. Through the first three days, neither Zack nor E. Roadhouse had set a PB, but Zack certainly had had the better chances of the two. He yeah, set numerous 227s, and with the new time save on Grief Cheese, he was in position to get a record if he could just get there again. Okay. But on the evening of day four, it was E. Roadhouse who found himself oh? ahead of the record after episode 6. After utilizing the new strategy, and having a nice start to episode 5, he remained in the lead, heading into 5-5. This was the level that caused Zack to miss the record so many times in the last oh. 3 days. But E. Roadhouse clutched it out. First try? He got a first try DV2, and Incredible. entering 5-6, 
His best possible time was 226.40. Okay. E Roadhouse was one level away from Door getting clip? a 226. Don't do the Zach dive as he we call it. He needed to get Door Clip. Do not do the Zach and dive. He did yes! After wasting about 20 seconds. Oh. The run was now teetering on the line of being a 226 or a 227. And in the end, the run finished as a 227.03. It wasn't a 226, but it was a world record. A new world record. It had taken over three days, but the world record had finally been achieved. And interestingly, at the exact same time, Zach was on a run in episode three. Entering 5-5, this run too had potential to get a 226. Oh, shit. It was a chance to take the record right back. But his final two levels weren't good enough. He finished with a 227.07. If he had set this time in out- Grind the door skip, Zach! Grind it! All right, you've got this. You're a champion. Get this door skip. Get it mentally. <laughs> Hour earlier, it would have been record but he was too late. And with the event winding down, it was shaping up to be a pretty disappointing few days for Zack. He had done attempts for four days straight, and not only was there no 226, he plays the long game. but he had lost his world record Everyone in the Everyone knows he plays the long game. Runs continued on for the next couple hours, but the event had a hard cutoff of 11 p.m. to get your last run started. And as the last few seconds before the deadline no ticked way. away, Zach was on the main menu. No way. <laughs> Maybe he shouldn't even bother starting another run. He had done hundreds of attempts over no the past few way, days, dude. and no 226 had come out of it. Once I'd lost record, I was like, okay, I lost record. I no longer have a streak of records. It is what it is. That's totally fine. But I really wanted to win BTR. Um, and I didn't want to go out on the note that I had, which was like multiple choked records in the event in previous days. Um, obviously I wanted the record back, obviously I wanted to win the event, but getting the first 226 was still like the priority in my mind. So, with just okay. eight seconds to go, Zach started his final run of the event. Can I say, um, what the hell is the motivation now that Summoning Salt has already made the video? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every speedrunner's goal is to be the first 26 or the first 25 or the first time thing so that somebody else says your name in a cool voice. Once that's happened, what the fuck? It's not going to do anything like a sequel. You're done. <laughs> you, you accomplished the goal. You got featured in the video. That's sick. <laughs> and in doing so, he joined six other runners who were in the middle of their own final runs. And I was like, this run has to finish. There is no world where I reset here because even if it doesn't PB, I have to get through this run no matter what. Once I started that run, I was like, I know I can do it. I didn't think I would, but I knew I could. Ooh, During every cutscene, I would be looking at the restream, just seeing who was, who was on a run. And I saw that Ginger was on a really good run. And the reason I noticed this was only because I could hear the commentary. And the commentary was just like losing their minds. They were like, I can't believe that Ginger is like on this insane run right now. And I was like, this must be really good for how much the commentary is talking about it. Sure enough, it was insane. Oh. Ginger was the game's seventh place runner okay. with a personal best of 231.59. Ginger, you here? Ginger! Maybe not. He is here. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> He's been here, dude. All right, let's see your run. Let's see your run, bro. Fine. But with his back to the wall, at the very end of the event, he had somehow mustered a run on world record pace into episode five, four minutes ahead of his PB. What does Ginger he have? has this capability sometimes to just play insane. He's in a we call it the ginger zone. And when he gets into the, in the speedrunning community that we're all in, we call it the ginger zone. When ginger gets into the ginger zone, it's unstoppable. Okay. He just, he enters a new gear, a new level. 
anomaly. He can sometimes just pull something out that no you've not. never like even thought was possible. And I knew that it was it was actually a realistic possibility that he would get record and even maybe the first 226 just with that run. Was this really happening? The seventh place runner jumping straight to world record? Sheesh! Well, Ginger had an up and down uh -oh. last few levels, and he finished with a 227.51. An enormous PB, and definitely one to be Sheesh! proud of. <laughs> but it still wasn't the world record. Okay. Meanwhile, while all eyes were on Ginger, Zach had started off on an incredible <laughs> run of his own. So we typically talk about a good run as exiting. We pay attention to our episode. He said, why the fuck the commentator's hyping up the other run? <laughs> he said, why? I'm going to make them fucking it. <laughs> I'm going to show them what's really worth pogging about. <laughs> Let you take a look back over here. They're talking, they're talking real loud on Ginger's stream. For exit. That marks like around the halfway point in the run. Previously, the best episode 4 exit Hold was, I think, faith. a 109.56. <laughs> uh, so getting a 109 episode 4 exit <laughs> was something that had been done, I think, a total of three times ever. And so what happened was I got another 109, and that is something that I wasn't even looking for. You don't need a 109 for a 226. You don't even need a 109 for a 225. And that made me a little nervous. But what happened okay. next was just plain crazy. On one of the game's greatest paces ever, Zack proceeded to play the best Episode 6 ever performed. Sheesh! Now, this was not only the fastest pace ever, it was the fastest pace ever by over a minute. <laughs> Zack was in position to demolish the world record. Oh. He just had to hold it together for the final Don't two the episodes. Dive, Don't do the fucking dive. The you'll run was pretty heart. much insane. Oh, you'll uh, break my heart! I kind of bled a little bit of time in Episode 3 until I got to the infamous library skip. Okay. When I got there, I prayed to the gods, and those gods did not give me a first try library skip. Okay. They did not give me a second try library skip. Oh. They did not even give me a tenth try library skip. Oh. So I ended up losing around 55 seconds on it. Is this RNG? Is this RNG or what? Trick. Now at this point, I was like, okay, this is fine. Now I wasn't happy. Yes. It's oh, only brutal. a minute. Now that might sound like an insane thing to say. This was such an insane run that I could afford a minute time loss. That's so I did lose crazy. a minute, and uh, everything was pretty much still in order. I was still way ahead of the record, and out of episode three, going into episode five, everything was was definitely still set up for me to to get a, a low two twenty six. It was definitely still in the question. Okay. But while Zach was trying to navigate through episode five, the other players were finishing up their runs, and guess what? EJP man. PB by over a minute. T Fresh, PB by 18 seconds. Nice. We Super, PB by 40 seconds. Nice. And all of this stuff is happening, and I'm on this run, and I'm like, my mind cannot comprehend everything going on. There's four people PBing, and so in my mind, I'm like, it's time to focus. So I close the stream. <laughs> okay. Nice. With all the other runners finishing, <laughs> <He listened. laughs> all eyes were back on Zach. He made his way into 5-5, still ahead of the record by close to a minute. When you're on pace, this level is the killer. I mean, it's no question. There isn't a level in the game that's even close to this hard. And I get to DB2 skip, and I realize that my hands are shaking. Uh -oh. It's very hard to pause buffer while your hands are doing this the whole time. Yeah. So, I have this, uh, this thing that I usually tell myself. I'm like, you can be nervous later, but now you have to hit the trick. <laughs> I get the trick third try, which is effectively my first actual attempt at the trick. DV2 skip definitely, I would say, is a harder trick, but DV3, when the when the pressure is on, when the nerves are setting in, is just... Oh. So I miss it once. Okay. And I'm like, that's fine. But when I miss it twice, that's when I start to get a little concerned. Oh, no. I think I missed it six times before oh, I no. finally got it. And at that point, I was like, uh-oh, this is going to be close. The best spin opening cutscene is over a minute long, and I think that is interesting. You get almost two minutes to sit there and, and be ready, you know, to prepare. The whole time, I was not preparing. I was sitting there, shaking, being nervous out of my mind, my heart was beating super fast, Everyone's I could not stop thinking about one. what was going to happen. I kept telling myself, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, and I don't think it was helping. 
<laughs> the no, toughest no. trick in 5-6 is door clip. Uh. It was a trick that killed many runs over the years. Uh. But this run was perhaps more important than any before. Zack made his way through 5-6, and miraculously, he got door clip right away. First try! This was it. He had some leeway, and as he entered the last room of the run, he was in position to get a massive record. So I enter the end platform, and I look at my timer, and I'm like, I can probably do this. So I get there, and I'm killing the, I'm killing the stormtroopers, and it's going a lot worse than it usually does. I should have absolutely been cementing like a low 226 5x here, and I was actually starting to lose a lot more time than I thought. And I took a very bad death. What? I killed no stormtroopers, it just died, which is just a flat two seconds. And I was like, okay, now I'm cutting it really close. So I kill the last guy, I look at it, and I literally just say, please, 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 my god, please. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, to do besides just pray. I hit the door. I looked at the timer. 226.59.7. Okay. I was at first in disbelief for about half a second. You did it. And then I lost my mind. I Let's could go! not believe it. I was just so proud Let's of myself. Go! I finally get the 226. The amount of emotions running through me were just unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. The last run of the last day? He gets the record back? The 226 was incredible. The culmination of Zack's and others' efforts since the start of the year. But it wasn't the end of the road for LEGO Star Wars speedruns. There was still room for improvement as a lot of time was bled in episodes 3 and 5. Yeah. So, even in the few months after the event, there's been a lot of record improvements. Just a few days after the event ended, Zack lowered the record by another 21 seconds, largely from cleaning up the final two episodes. Right. He'd then lower the record down to the world's first Jeez. 225, Machine. thanks in part to a new strategy in 5-4 by EJP Man. Meanwhile, both E Roadhouse and Ginger Legend were getting close. E Roadhouse had a couple runs that barely missed record due to a missed skip, and Ginger Legend had taken his PB down to a mid-226. Of those three runners, Zack would have the most success in the following few weeks, ultimately lowering the record to the first 224. But that's not who holds the record today. What? That honor goes to E Roadhouse. Oh, he's 224 43. <laughs> This record featured a fairly slow first four episodes, oh, but had the strongest final two episodes ever oh, in a run. Shit. That's where the world record stands today. To most, LEGO Star Wars is a game that you played ten years ago for fun, then never touched again. It was a neat distraction, and a source of nostalgia, but in the end, LEGO Star Wars was a game of the past. But to this dedicated group of speedrunners, this game is so much more than that. They've been able to no extract yeah, no thousands of hours of enjoyment, creating rivalries and friendships that have lasted years. They've given the game a renewed boost of popularity, years after its heyday. And over the course of a decade, this is how they've lowered its world record. Oh, that's cool. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Greg, subscribe! This dude's out here making feature length films that are interesting start to finish about <laughs> speed runs for decade old games. That was fire. That was one of the best ones. That's one of the best summits I've ever seen. That was great. That was fantastic. The VOD of the. Let me check speedrun.com. Wait. I want to see the VOD of Zach breaking the record at, at the Come back record. after that unbelievable yeah. run. Um, we still have EJP <laughs> down 30 seconds from Sorry, his I first. skip. Wait. Yeah, I grow. How do you not rem Congrats on the. Wait. <laughs> right here. This should be it. This should be it. Okay, this. He has a death. He has a death. Best. It's not the oh best. Oh my god, this is so Zach, come on, come on, come on. Please just kill everyone. The beach guy is like oh four left it's okay it's oh, yeah. it he's it's close oh no does no, he have no. it no no no, no, no.
Well, it looks like an Atriox chat room in here. It's all the same people I'm seeing. <laughs> it's the fucking Bricko Fat and Pickle Toe and Chimkin and. <laughs> uh, Serious? Sorry. What? Are you kidding? No. No what? fucking uh -huh. way. Excuse me. How do you? <laughs> and he's done it. Zach has one BTR. He got record. He got the 26. He did it. <laughs> Last run of At BTR ending literal, <laughs> world record. Literal no reset. That's insane. I mean, that, that's a sick. That's a, that's, that is, I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, wow, that was really fun to watch. Shout outs to every member of the, the community that was in the chat. All of these goaded speedrunners that showed up. Congratulations to all of you on your achievements. It was really a really impressive story. That was really that's that's fucking cool. Um uh, and good luck. Where I know some of you are still running. Even post summoning salt video, you're still running. <laughs> Although I guess right after the video, that's when you want to run the most, because everyone's intrigued. You know, everyone comes in. Uh anyway, shout out to you have a you have a sick community. Uh Drake's to everybody that showed up in chat. Drake's to all these guys that are putting insane amounts of their life on the line to fucking push the limits of a game. For our enjoyment. Um, I'm sure they earned a bunch of fans today. Uh, it was very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to raid Wii Super. I'm going to end stream now. It's 1141. I got I got to wake up tomorrow. I got more stuff to do for the German thing. I got a lot of things to do. Uh, I'm going to raid Wii Super. We're going to pass on some love. I want as many people who can who are here to come in and, and show some love. Say, hey, we're going to pass the whole community over. Um... And thanks again to Summoning Salt for, for uh, making this awesome content and being cool with us reacting to it. Um, raid We Super. Mm. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye.